everyone, and welcome to episode 32 of the Avocado Gamescast, the Avocado's gaming podcast. This is actually the first episode of the Gamescast that we've recorded in 2018, and because of that, we're going to be taking a look ahead at what's coming this year. We might even make a few predictions along the way. But before we get to that, let's introduce ourselves. My name's Merv, and joining me we have our faithful editor and Destiny Commissar, Kappa. Okay, I'll edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> just edit out the whole podcast. Um, we also have the fleshiest flesh that ever fleshed, Ben. Good afternoon. We have the meanest stick jockey southeast of the outback, it's Gua here. Good eye. And finally, he's the number one source of unlicensed Suikoden and fan games. Give a warm welcome to PT. Oh, there'll be the randomizer coming out in 2018. Yeah, just like the Zelda one that had at AGDQ this year. Yes, which I played quite a bit of, and it hates me and hates everyone involved. It's great. It's a great video game. Yeah, I, I'm always I'm always glad to see more punishing video games come out. Not because I enjoy playing them, but I enjoy watching other people suck at them. So it works out pretty well. They, yeah, I guess so, so they they hide all of the swords in the dark world. It just it drives me crazy. Yeah, I can't find anything. Um, so this is a special podcast because I think it's the first time we've got two Aussies on the podcast at the same time. It's like we, it's got... my first time on at all. Yeah. So Guahir's Guahir. I was going to say I made the exact same today joke when I was on my first one. <laughs> I think that's. I think every time we bring a new Australian on the podcast, they have to make the same g'day joke. Uh, I've also been told that you guys don't say g'day as much as other people think you do. Um, I do say it. You, you kind of say it, but not like... You don't really go into the hard, G'day, mate. It's just like, G'day. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah. It's okay. just a very casual greeting. Okay, so it's not like the, the really stereotypical ones that... Uh, yeah, yeah, we don't like run do. run up to each other and, and, and uh, you know, swing our fists through the air and say, Good eye! Okay, <laughs> it's, it's good to know, it's good to know. Um... So we all we haven't we haven't recorded in like a month. So a lot has happened since we last recorded, and we've all had a lot of time over the winter holidays to play a whole bunch of video games. So, would you? What was in your holiday hall? What did you guys start playing over the holidays? Uh, have you guys gotten sick of me talking about Battle Chasers yet? Because I'll start out with Battle Chasers if I have to. But Go oh ahead. my god, I, don't think I have actually... got to get. I don't think you've actually talked about it on the podcast. Not on the podcast, but, man, you guys, this game, somebody said it this really well, and I think it's really true about it. Like, um, you know how kind of, like, Pillars and, like, this recent, you know, batch of games have really kind of revitalized the CRPG, you know, landscape? Um, to me, Battle Chasers is kind of doing a similar thing um, What's with the JRPGs. CRPG? It's a JRPG, but I would say very kind of loosely um no, sorry sorry what what's the c stand for? oh see computer yeah. rpg yeah oh. te- so baldur's gate those types of games um we used to call them western rpgs for a while but i think crpg is kind of taken over from that term um but yeah the old school isometric top down you know that style of game um i, I really like this game I, I don't it feels like one of those like labor of love type games that just came together in all the best possible ways um Have you actually um read battle chases like the comic no never read it i didn't even know it was a comic i i know uh joe madura worked on it you know and i know he's kind of done his own thing for quite a while now but um never read the comic and i i can't believe that this game kind of it's rare for a game to sneak up on me and kind of come out of nowhere and me to be like this impressed with it but i really really like this game um i sat down and plowed through it in two or three days over the winter break um and it was it was a, a really fun time and it's it's like a twenty dollar game so it's not anything crazy but uh i I really enjoyed every i mean people complain about the difficulty spikes but i think a lot of people forget one of the hallmarks of any jrpg is what grinding right so i mean there there the way it does it is there's an overworld map that you travel on kind of on a path 
Uh, and, you know, various gates that you get through unlock, stuff like that. But at certain points of battle start getting difficult, what you need to do is go sleep in an inn. It respawns the overworld map and you basically grind, you know, whatever you want to grind. And you can kind of do focus grinding, too. So, like, if you're like, okay, each enemy has like a like an entry in the game's journal. And the more you learn about them, the more damage you can do to them, the more, you know, crits you get, get stuff like that. So if you're like, OK, I'm really just going to focus on grinding skeletons for a while you can go around the map and just pick up on the skeletons and go from there um at a certain point when they stop giving you experience you don't have to fight them anymore you just walk right over their little square they don't attack you so it's (laughs) it's got that built into it too um really liked it guys i mean it came out of nowhere for me so i I wanted to say a lot of good stuff about that game because i I enjoyed pretty much all of it Um, and i've been on um, is it turn-based combat yeah, it's turn-based combat. It's very traditional. You'll recognize it almost immediately. Yeah, um, I'm looking at it, screen talks right now. It looks like it looks like it, it has sort of JRPG gameplay with very Western aesthetics. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, the 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 art style is very is very good looking. I mean, it's like it a hand. Is just Joe mad to the fucking max. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and it, it looks good. It looks good in motion. Was was the one thing you know because Joe Mad's last game that everybody remembers is uh, you know probably what Dark Siders, right? And then. I think it's the last one he worked on, wasn't it? Yeah, and I mean, but like, it's a very distinct aesthetic. But like, it doesn't. It looked kind of weird to see, you know, um, the you know the the way his designs kind of moved, and they were too big, but they moved kind of weirdly. But uh, this game kind of carries that over in, in in a different way, and I think it looks really cool in action. Um, See, after five years of World of Warcraft, I didn't even notice the problem with them being too big and moving weird. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But this, you know, for an RPG, this one and another game I've been playing a lot of Divinity. Um, one of the things it does is it doesn't hand feed you every quest anymore. You know, like it doesn't give you a journal entry every time you read a book, or you know, there's a lot of little things where if you if you see it or do it, you have to kind of stick it in the back of your mind and say, oh, I need to go back here and unlock this very zelda kind of like you know like once i get this weapon or learn how to open this door i need to go back to this area all the dungeons are procedurally generated for the most part i mean it's not like it's totally random but you can do a dungeon three or four different times and get you know different encounters each time i didn't realize that until i went back um and started replaying dungeon i was like i don't remember this room you know then i was like oh i went and looked online oh they're procedurally generated and there's entire quests that you might miss if you only do a dungeon once or twice um, so, I mean, there, there's a lot to it. And then you'll pick up books that'll say, oh, you know, this, this thing was buried here and it's a treasure map, but it doesn't stick it on your map. So you've got to remember where it's said. And eventually when you unlock that gate, you go to that area, dig up the treasure. And sometimes it's, you know, a, a really cool, uh, big improvement. So, so I, I liked it a lot. Um, is this so, the kind yeah. of game where, uh, it sort of feeds you the main quest, but if you want to sort of explore the side content, then you have to yeah, like, keep these very- things in mind? Very much. And like it, it, it's the journal is well done. It's not like they kind of try to like hide it from you. I wouldn't try to say that, but they don't hold your hand with getting you from one spot to another or you'll pick up something and it won't tell you exactly what it's for. But like, you know, you'll find like a core, like a battery to a robot. And then, you know, you know, two or three levels later, you'll find a room full of, you know, like a robot and one's powered down. And you're like, oh, that battery thing. Um, there's a little fishing mini game that's really easy. I mean, it's just kind of there to give you something else to do to break up dungeons. Those feed into like a kind of like a, a chess system. Like think about microtransactions, but using only in-game money. Um, so like you fish, <laughs> you get these little shadow points. You give them to the shadow v- vendor. He'll sell you loot directly, or you can take these chances on these loot boxes. Um, so I bought quite a bit of those. Actually, when uh, I was about to beat the game, I just cheated myself a ton of them just so I could see kind of what was in some of them. Um, and I mean, like, it, th- there's a lot of crafting stuff. You can craft the ultimate weapons in the game just by crafting. Uh, there's like there's like that JRPG style of epic quest to get you the ultimate weapons that you have. But a lot of it requires just, you know, getting the right thing at the right time and being able to figure out what goes where. Um, really enjoyed it. It reminded me a lot. And I mean, I don't bring this one up a lot. Remind me a lot of Final Fantasy VII. Um, that kind of style and that kind of feeling in that in that world a lot of times um, really kind of just like the characters and, and what they're how you get from point A to point B kind of felt like how in Final Fantasy you know you're just kind of always like taking on parts of the world as you went um, that's what this one had to it I, I really liked it nice so uh, ask, did you like it enough though do you reckon it would make you want to read the comics or are you just yeah I mean I, I I would I would definitely I mean I read comics a ton anyway it's just I don't know how this one fell off my radar you know there's like a lot of those comics that just for whatever reason just don't pick up 
Um, I would yeah. definitely give the comics a shot. I, I got enough of the flavor of the world that I'm interested in it, you know, and it's a lot of kind of like ancient evils and, you know, chosen ones, that kind of stuff. It, but it, it's in a cool enough fantasy world. Um, I really like the way the characters you, you get. I think it's like five or six main characters. They all kind of interact with each other really well um it kind of a different play off different archetypes of each other i mean you've got the old uh wizard guy who's you know like wise but also he's kind of like a, actually a smart ass most of the time um just kind of like surly uh you got the the rogue with the heart of gold who you know she always might betray you but she actually you know is your best friend and this giant robot guy it's kind of the swordsman i think was kind of the most like straightforward i would guess but even he had some coolness to it. his sword was was really awesome um but yeah, I, I enjoyed everything about it. So I, I would say if you see it on sale or if you even take it, feel like taking a chance, um, that one was kind of came out of nowhere for me. So that's what I've been telling everybody about it. Nice. Um, is there anything else you play over the holidays you want to talk about? Divinity Original Sin 2, man. I'm, I'm almost done with it. And like, I, I, it is such a sprawling RPG. It's hard to even sit down and feel like, you know, like put your mind together until it's all done. But uh, I like it. I like it for the most part but it definitely gives you a very like an overwhelming feeling at times um and there's some choices that you make that down the the line you only start to kind of put together what happened with that choice or why you did that um it's it, it's another game that kind of throws a lot at you all at once and um it expects you to kind of keep in mind where you need to go and what you need to do next the main quest obviously is pretty easy but the there's there's something up and i can't put my finger on it. i don't know if you guys have played it at all but between the the journal and the quest guide and the the map that it just there's some kind of weird disconnect like it's not as good as it could be um so i kind of find myself struggling like going through the journal and it's really vague it's like the king wants to see us and then like you have to look at all these little like points in the map and try to remember where the king was and who sent you and like it's it's like it's it's not i don't need the hand holding i don't want that even but I do kind of need that, you know, when you've picked up 50 quests in a town that you just showed up at, you know, I, I don't remember yeah, their name. remember what all the fucking were. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, did I get this quest from that guy or that guy? Or, you know, I actually, I got it from a book, you know, from this guy's house. <laughs> it has nothing to do with that guy. So, this yeah, there's a... This sort of reminds me of the, the quest log in Mass Effect 3. Yeah, yeah, it's very similar. It's like it puts it all in one spot, but then the map isn't as good. It's just kind of like a very generic layover type map. Um, you know, really r- low res and everything. It's the map is kind of a of an annoyance. Um, but I mean, I, I've I've made my way through ninety percent of it. I'd say I've only missed you know quests here or there. Um, but I mean, I like it. Uh, I like Divinity One. I like this one a lot better. Um, this one kind of sacrificed. Divinity One? Do you mean Original Sin? Or Original Divinity? Sin One. Yeah, I I, I played a Divinity One and it was kind of wonky. I did like Dragon Commander. I did like uh, what was the one? Uh, Divinity Two. Was... I think. Divinity, Divine Divinity, Divine Divinity, Divinity. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Divinity Two was the one that was like a third person. Uh, Divine Divinity was like built on the same engine as the first one. Yeah, I liked that one, and I liked uh, the Dragon Commander one, which was totally its own thing. Um, and Dragon original one's so, fucking insane. Yeah, it's weird. Like, let's put fucking jet engines on a dragon and then do an RTS. Yeah. <laughs> Why the fuck not, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Um, so I, I yeah, I, I don't know. I liked it. I, I'm like basically at the last area right now. So I really haven't been able to kind of form some opinions on it yet. I do feel like there's a lot of choices where it's like, you know, a lot of that, those weird false choices. It's very like the story to me, the story beats are very Witcher. Like, like you think you've made a choice, but you know, the game kind of throws one in your face. Like, ha, you thought that was going to give you this. Well, no, it actually does this, um, which I think is kind of a weird bait and switch. And um, I, I don't like, it, it also kind of has this thing where, uh, your your conversations are like most of these games, you know, wits and intellect and scholar and all this stuff really uh, colors a lot of your interactions with people. But if you don't have the right party with all those things taken care of, you miss big things in the game. Um, you know, if you don't have somebody in your in your party right then who's a mystic and you're talking to a mystic, and the only way to get further in his quest is through a mystic answer. You don't have it. Then, well, now you have to search five million libraries to find the book that teaches you. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's not bad. It's just kind of a, a weird way to get through it all. Um, and I, I don't, I, like I keep saying, I, I don't I don't need it to tell me everything to do, but I do kind of feel like every now and then it could help me out with trying to figure out where, where at least what my reaction to this scenario will be if I'm trying to play this game a certain way. 
you know? It seems like it's turning a lot of the game into, like, a series of chores. And even if a game isn't holding your hands, you don't want it to be a chore. Right, exactly. So, like, if I go to a new area and I'm like, okay, well, I, I picture my my guy as this. You know, I'm this person here to set the land free and be a noble king and, you know... But a lot of the choices it gives me are like nothing like that. It's like kill this guy, throw this guy off a bridge or, you know, <laughs> poison his soup. And I'm like, I don't want to do any of that, you know. So um, it does account for lots and lots of decisions. Don't get me wrong. But um, the RP part of it is, is a little bit difficult to get through at times because even when – did you guys play Original Sin 1? A little bit, I, but I need to go back to it. So you know how's that – We've heard of this franchise – it has a uh, a mechanic in where like basically if if your player control character says something and your npc has a different personality they can ag- disagree with it and on the first one the way they handled it was like through like a weird paper rock scissors game but now it's kind of like it's kind of wired in in like a plus minus type mass effect you know relationship meter um that i've never really gotten a good grasp on like a, apparently i romance one character like cuz i got i just well, unlocked the last area and it's like Hey, uh, do you want to sneak off somewhere together? I'm like, oh, I didn't know it was like that. You know, like we'd shared some moments, but I didn't know. But yeah, so I've, I've got to play through it again to get the other three stories that are in it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, 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 I've, I've liked it so far. Um, yeah. Yeah, so it sounds like it's, it's this very sort of full featured RPG that might have a little bit of a, a few rough edges to it, make it a little bit inaccessible. Times. Yeah, and it, it's it's not bad. It's definitely a, a still a must get. It's it's probably going to be my game of the year RPG, but well, what would have, would have been 2017. But um, there's there's enough weirdness to it that I still kind of feel like there's some systems that could be refined. Hopefully, by the time Original Sin three or whatever comes out, that that they kind of make some of those changes. Yeah. So speaking of RPGs that are sort of in that vein, I've been I've been playing and I played it through most of the holidays. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And it is, for those of you who don't know, it's the latest entry in the whole Xeno mega franchise. Um, and this particular game is is a JRPG set in these massive, sort of massive connected open worlds. Uh, kind of like Dragon Age Inquisition, where there are just these huge, large areas and each one is pretty big. Uh it is like like Kappa described Divinity. It's very much this game where there's a lot of good systems and a lot of good mechanics, and sometimes it just doesn't explain to you exactly what you need to do, or it leaves, um, or it sort of misleads you and tells you to go one way when you should really go another, things like that. So th- these there are these little frustrations there, but otherwise, you know, world design and, and world building and the art is really really good. Uh, if you guys it's the one with um your own giant monsters, aren't you? Yeah, so that's yeah that's the, the first Xenoblade. You're on one of these giant monsters. Xenoblade X takes the same sort of mechanics from the first Xenoblade, but puts you on like an alien planet. On Xenoblade Chronicles Two, you you're kind of hopping between different monsters. Yeah, so um, to to explain that in more detail, uh, the setting of this world is that everybody lives on the backs of these massive, gigantic monsters called titans. Like, imagine that they're, like, they're continent-sized, basically. Sort and, of like Discworld on the back of a giant tortoise. Yeah, almost like Discworld. Um, like, imagine... If, each one instead I'd say, of a tortoise, it was a fucking Final Fantasy summon. Yeah, pretty right. much. So, like, these things look like friggin' dragons. Uh, some people even live inside these, these, uh, these dragons or, or titans provided that their digestive tracts aren't terribly uh, hostile. You can, like, live inside them. So there's one world that's just, like, set inside, entirely inside one of these titans. It's really neat. Yeah, so do you guys have any familiarity with uh, the Xeno franchise at all? Because this is my I first entry. I played Xeno well, well, Blade well, 1 on the Wii, or whatever the fuck it was, and I kind of hated it, and I think I'm one of the only people that did. No, that's fair. I, a, lot, a lot of people hate it. PT, you were saying something? I was going to say, I, I played a little of Chronicles via Dolphin, but uh, but no, I mean, I know Xeno Gears and all three Xeno Saga games, and oh my. Ah, <laughs> uh, boy. But, I mean, those only have, like, tangible connections at this juncture. 
right? Yeah, I didn't realize they were all one franchise. I thought they were just fucking coincidentally named Zeno something. Well, it is a series. Like, the Zeno is a series, right? But I don't think that they've ever really gone back to anything from Zeno Saga, right? Wasn't that one kind of, like, cast off on its own? Like, there, that weird... None of, I think you know, the Zeno Saga games tell one sort of... I don't say coherent. That might be giving you too much credit. But they tell one story. <laughs> oh, God, no, it wasn't coherent. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was um, big philosophy. It was six games reduced to three, and the third game had the let the least budget one could possibly imagine. Yeah, it wasn't like the end, just like a, like basically it turns into a text adventure at the end because it ran out of money. No, that's that's the original Zeno Gear. So that's disc two. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. This this just has a the city has a history of kind of running out of money. Um, but Zeno, the Xeno Blade games, uh, they're kind of like Final Fantasy in that they're all set in sort of similar worlds with similar creatures, but the stories aren't related at all. Is it actually the same world? Like, is the monster from the first one in the second one, or is it just they happen to both be independent worlds that are on giant monsters? I think it's the latter, although apparently there are links between the two. If you look, I'm not really on the up and up about this because I've never played those Xenoblade games. But like the other, co- like the commonalities of you know there are humans and there are Nopon. Those are in uh, in both games. Nopon being these this race of like I want to say humanoid fat rodents. I guess I don't know <laughs> what, what you'd call them, but. Okay, I'm sorry, I have to Google this. How do you spell that? Nopon, N-O-P-O-N. So they're, imagine these, these rodent-like creatures that are basically spherical-shaped, and they have arms, and also... <laughs> they also have ears that are prehensile, that are, like, second arms. Holy shit! Oh, dear. Are you looking at a... Fo- I'm sorry, I'm just finding pictures of them. <laughs> they're adorable, and they speak, like, hilariously broken English, where they only really refer to themselves in the third person. Um, but yeah, like, Have you guys funny. seen the animal called a pika? Yeah. They're basically like humanoid pikas, like very round. Oh my god, those are the best. They're, a lot of people find them annoying, but I'm, I'm down with them. I'm down with any race of animals. They have, they have this really weird way of speaking too, where... Instead of saying, um, they add like pawn after anything. So, for example, so they're the Moogles. Yeah, they're, they're like the Moogles. For example, they'd say like instead of saying uh, father, they'd say daddy pawn. And instead of saying grandfather, they'd say grampy pawn. It's okay. I'm starting to hate them already now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I would. Aww. Aww. Well. Yeah, you can play the game, and you'll probably end up hating them, but I think they're adorable and hilarious, and I want more games with what, Nopon in them. What role do they fulfill in the world? Um, in the world of Xenoblade Chronicles 2, they're mostly merchants. So they're known for being like a commercial class of people. Uh, but they, they fulfill all sorts of roles. Some of them are you know, just random folks you'll meet. There are Nopon pretty much everywhere. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're, they pretty much do everything humans do. It's right. A, it's a little weird. You just gotta go do you ever have, it. Do you ever have to fight them? I think so. I can't, re- I think I fought one so far. Yeah, you can fight them sometimes. Most of you are just fighting humans and monster and, like, animals. You fight a lot of wildlife. Because the wildlife <laughs> in this game just attack you on sight. Some of them, like, most of them are, are pretty docile, but some of them are extremely hostile. So you can just be walking through an area, and you're at, like, level 20, and then a level 85 creature will just swoop out of the sky and one-shot your entire party. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not the friendliest game. This is not a game, like, if, I would not say this should not be your first video game. If you've never played a video game before, don't play this game. Uh, it's really for people who've played a lot of video games. See, I've always, I've got one friend who's like a fanatic for this series. I mean, just like this this is his Fallout or Halo or whatever, you know. Yeah. Um, and he is like so disappointed in this game. I I can't even like explain because we, we don't speak the same language when it comes to this game. But it's been hitting him hard, man. And it's like this kind of stuff you've been saying, where it's just 
you know, yeah, every time I talked about it, he's like, man, I don't want to talk about it. Like, he, yeah, first he's all excited, and it's just slowly <laughs> gotten less and less about the game. And now I'm like, all right, I guess it's one of those, man. I, I, I went through my Mass Effect Andromeda, so I know what we're talking about right now. Yeah, I would, I would not say it's like Mass Effect Andromeda. It's a mostly well-constructed game with a few annoyances. It's like, I would say it's like your standard 7 out of 10. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I, that's kind of how he's described it. But I think he was, this to him was like going to be the game that puts it on the map for everybody else in the world who isn't as into this series, you know? Because yeah. the Switch doesn't have a ton out right now. So the game was going to sell, well, probably pretty much regardless, you know? I mean, it's um, going gonna, it's gonna to outsell the, the previous two games in the, ser- in the right, game right. series, so, for sure. I mean, he had he was hyped to the moon, and he's he's kind of like he's a good dude. I, I don't know. <laughs> Listen to the podcast, so sorry, Vindy, but yeah, he's been kind of bummed out about it every time we talk games lately. Well, yeah, I, there are people who are, who are disappointed. We're expecting sort of something else out of this game, but for what it's worth, I, I've enjoyed my time with it, and it's probably going to take me. I think I'm 50, forty or fifty hours in. It's probably going to take me another hundred to get through this. It's Damn. a good game. Uh, so, Bayer, what have you been playing? Or what did you play over the holidays? Uh, I, I played heaps. Um, I uh, Video games have a tendency to take over my life, so I go like six months without playing anything. Um, and then I start playing, and boy, do I keep playing. And I don't cook properly, and I don't eat, and I don't sleep properly. I just play video games. That just sounds like my life. Five sounds, sounds, like you're doing, <laughs> sounds like you're doing it right to me. Yep. Sometimes, sometimes it is weird, like especially when you get older, about how, uh, you know, I don't, I just don't sit down and play a game overnight these days because I'm old now. But sometimes that game just kicks in, and you're like, wow, it's. I mean, this is not even this is not like the civilization cliche or anything. Like it's another game, but oh wow, it's three a.m. Great, cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I had well, that. I mean. Any any game can do that to me if I even remotely like it. Yeah. Uh, it, it, games even like if I don't think I like it, I can suddenly realize it's three a.m. and I've kept playing, and I, then I'm well. I guess it's not that bad, huh? That's what happened with with I just started Yakuza Kiwami last night, the remake of the first Yakuza game, and yeah, I I just sat there playing for three hours, I didn't even realize, and like, oh shit, it's three a.m. What am I doing with my life? Uh, but what, what, what have you been playing, Guajira? Like a couple of games that you played. Uh, the best thing I played this uh, this last little while is Horizon Zero Dawn, which um, I did I did post about it on the Avocado a bit. It was it was it took its time getting me into it. It really did. Um, and I I thought it was a bit sort of saccharine, and I and I thought the the mythology was a bit hacky, and uh, the gameplay irritated me for a really long time. And then suddenly, when it clicked, I loved it. Uh, and you know, like top ten games in the last five years, loved it. Uh, I oh, so wow. I just fell in love with the world somehow. Uh, I think it was when all the <laughs> I think it was when all the kids died during the proving. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I hope that doesn't sound wrong. Uh, no, I, I just I sort of I thought it was a wussy game. Like I thought it was gonna it was gonna wuss out of anything yeah, no, interesting. Really it just it when all the children died. <laughs> well, yeah, I, it it suddenly clicked as like, oh shit, this is a serious, you know, they're not they're not fucking around, uh, and I and for whatever reason that just every clicked into place. I suddenly fell in love with the main character whose name has slipped my mind, Alloy. Um, I, I, you know, the the people on the internet are not big fans of Alloy. I've I've seen, which is really weird because she's like you know a dream character to me she's aggressive she's tough uh she's smart i i yeah i really really loved it and i love the world the only thing i didn't like about it and it's almost a petty complaint but i really really hated that you couldn't in any meaningful way upgrade your um spear Uh, so can you upgrade the 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 rest of your weapons well yeah pretty well yeah not upgrade per se as much as get new and interesting and different variations. Yeah, your spear is kind of like, if this makes sense, Marv, it's kind of like the the Assassin Gauntlets in Assassin's Creed. Like, you can do, like, different finishers or combos with it, but it's basically, you know, more or less the... You don't ever upgrade your blade in any kind of meaningful way in Assassin's Creed. Kind of the same thing I think he's talking about. You do now in the new Assassin's Creed. In Origins, which is now basically an RPG. 
Oh god, I yeah. loved it. <laughs> yeah, you and Ben were, were huge fans. Yep. That's you, um, Yeah, that was gonna be the next thing I was gonna say got, like, is guns and the poison and all that shit. Are you talking to me or Sorry, yeah, sorry, Ben? Assassin's Creed two, you oh. upgrade. No, but I mean, the blade didn't get like a like a cosmetic look. So like kind of like what he's saying is like the spear in Horizon, like you'll get like if you push Y on a downed enemy, you'll instantly kill it. Or like same thing, like with the blade in Assassin's Creed, you know, like you can poison with it or, you know, stealth. No, kill. that wasn't that wasn't my experience at all. The the spear, uh, if if your downed enemy was like a, a very, very low level enemy, yeah, you, you, you can one shot it. But the the frustration was that no matter how strong you are and, and you know I, I maxed out at level whatever the maximum level is before I finished the game uh, my spear was no stronger at the end of the game than it was at the beginning of the game so it was actually kind of annoying that the whole game turned into rage ranged combat which I like but I also like to mix it up with some melee and, and it's but the, I just found my spear so useless yeah it, it that game really does push you away from just meleeing your way through yeah. it. It, 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 it like not just the range but i think it also wants you to do the different things you know like uh i don't want to say charm but you know like uh you know control the robots to fight for you yeah. and, and do a lot of, it, it it does push you away from from that style of play i think that's kind of a little annoying too um but i i, I totally get what you mean you know that it, it's it, if you're not sold on that style of combat i don't know if it gets better i mean you know, like if if you start that game at wow, this combat's a little weird. I don't like being forced to use my bow constantly. It, that, yeah, you're right. It doesn't ever like really give you not an alternative to it. It did get better once I gave the range of weapons more of a chance. You know, there's uh, if if anybody is not aware of the concept of the game, you're fighting these giant machine creatures um, of sort of dinosaurs. Yeah, robot dinosaurs of more or less unknown origins. And one of the ways, one of the most effective ways of beating them is by knocking parts off them before you actually try to inflict damage. So and, it's sort of like uh, Dead Space? I don't know what that is. Yeah, well, yeah. But so in order to to expose their weak point, once you expose their weak point, you can do certain things. You can kill them outright. You can like ride them certain ones you can make them yeah. explode you can make them attract other ones so yeah and, kind and of like some dead of them... space but it, it's not how, the only way to kill them you can just keep hitting them and you okay. know knock all their yeah. things off yeah and like and some of them also have like weapons off on them you can, yeah um you can blow you can blow the cannon off their head and then pick up the cannon and fire it at them uh so you know you, you well, can do all that sort fun. of stuff that, yeah it's it so it's exactly and once i really gave that it gave the other kinds of ranged combat a chance other than just firing shit at them uh then i really really enjoyed the game a lot more i froze pretty much every large enemy with ice bombs uh <laughs> yeah it it was it so basically as soon as i got over that first hurdle everything clicked into place in a really really terrific way and i and i would definitely recommend it so you also mentioned that you played Assassin's Creed Origins, was that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so how, yeah. how do you enjoy that game? Uh, I would... If ben, Ben, what do you reckon, out of 10? Uh, I'm still playing it, so I'd say 10. Yeah. I was probably, like, like 7.5 or 8, you know. I reckon it has flaws, but, like... I was playing it last night and finding shit I still hadn't found after like 80 hours of that game. It's fucking insane. I yeah, I mean I'm probably like a 9 out of 10 on it too. Uh, it's there's a lot to it. I I don't know if I want to spoil this, but I'm it's all over the internet. Have you guys found the secret meteor yet in Assassin's Creed? It's pretty early on. <laughs> when that happened, that blew my mind. I was like, "Wow, this is pretty wild." Um, I don't know. If, wait. I don't I don't think I found that. I played it a lot, but I don't think I found that. Uh Talking about the Final All Fantasy right. quest. So I'm gonna, yeah, okay. I'll, uh, spoiler, yeah. <laughs> There's a Final Fantasy. Uh, what's the newest one? Fifteen. Fifteen. Well, yeah. There's, well, there's there's a Final Fantasy tie-in in there. Um, you see, and on the other hand, there and fifteen, there actually is an Assassin's Festival. Yeah. Like content thing. It's weird. Isn't that weird though that those two series are like, yeah, cool. We'll have content in each other's games. Fuck it. Uh, there was um an Ezio costume in Final Fantasy thirteen two or whatever. Yeah, 
So I think that's really cool. But as soon as that happened, I was like, because I never expected it. Because that or just takes itself pretty seriously. You know, there's not a lot of like, yeah. there's not a lot of moments like Ezio would have where it was like, you know, you go on a quest to go kiss a girl or something. You know, um, this one is 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 pretty serious, pretty heavy. And then when that happened, I was like, okay, I, I'm I'm in. I, everything about Assassin's Creed Origins, I think, is a is a cool return to form. I hope I more to come. Love the horrific mutant chocobo camel you get. <laughs> the, <laughs> it, it takes a lot to get me out of my uh, war chariot but yeah i assassin's creed origin i think is the more we can talk about it, the better because i think a lot of people are just like Shh, i'm done with this series after you know three or four and, um, missteps let's let's be honest but new fucking have you like put it in lately uh i the last i played it was two weekends ago when i killed when i fought uh what was his name set oh yeah they, oh, um, just I just put the, in the, like a the last new one I did line. just before that. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you go, go off. Uh, oh, sorry. No, I, I was just saying the, la- the last time I played was the, the, the big new boss before set. I can't remember who, who was. Maybe Anubis? Yeah, um, yeah. I think maybe so it was They're Anubis. just like killing Egyptian gods now. Yeah, well, it's like a yeah, weak, the, it's weak like thing that they do. It's it, it's cool. It sounds lame, but it's kind of like a like an MMO style boss fight. You know, lots of like telegraphed attacks and stuff. That game's gone all in on RPG. Uh, th- that's the one thing I, you know, I, I noticed most about it. And I think like everybody, I haven't, I haven't like got to the end of it. But it's not because I'm not enjoying it. It's because there's a lot there. And it kind of, I play like I played I, Skyrim. I did get to the end of it, and um, yeah, the the ending and the RPG aspects of it are my least favorite things about the game. Which is, which is why I have a less favorable opinion of it now that I finished it than when I was playing it. Yeah, I could see that. I just thought I'd mention they did just add in a new quest line in it, which is going to lead into the DLC that comes out next week, like a big new area DLC they're oh. putting out. Oh, cool. Oh, nice. Yeah, I give that a try. Is anybody else um, really invested in the, uh, what are they called? You know, the, the, the like, precursors? Who, who are they? You know, the, that the is race. my favorite bit of the game, and fuck anyone that says to get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. God damn it. I love it. I love that mythology. I'm all about it. And I don't know why I'm so into it, but fuck, I am so into it. And I remember that before Origins came out, they were like, yeah, there's going to be a, a lot of cool precursor material in the game. And I was really looking forward to like modern day gameplay segments, which usually the gameplay is terrible, but the it, the, the storyline that advances That's is really cool. cool modern day back and it's not just like fucking cutscenes and fucking like first person explore this goddamn office in ubisoft montreal yeah the, I, I i like everything about the precursors forerunners whatever they call them i i honestly can't remember either right now you know but you know the alien civilization that existed before i love all that I stuff about like, it those who came before yeah but i was yeah. so burned out example. on desmond himself I couldn't wait for them to get over Desmond's story and then on to, you know, because what I what I figured was you would get introduced to like each game. It would be like, OK, so Desmond's, you know, ancestor was Altair and then, you know, Giuseppe, you know, whatever his ancestor was Ezio. But no, it kind of like just it used Desmond as kind of like the connection for way too many parts of Assassin's Creed. So I was ready for them to move on. Um, and, and I mean, they the mistake did. was making Assassin's Creed 2 into essentially three games. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and most people were bored by, you know, I, I would say Brotherhood. I never um, even finished Brotherhood. Yeah, Probably so, never will. And, and 3 was, was, was a huge mistake. Everything about 3 just, I don't know, it didn't sit right. I mean, Connor being, you know, American Revolution, Forrest Gump, the timing, the setting was all <laughs> weird. Running around the forest just didn't feel right, you know, for what that series was about. Um, yeah, everything about it just kind of was weird. Um, three was the first one they did because when Patrice Desilet started with one, he had a three game plan going on and Patrice Desilet left during the development of Brotherhood, which means they completely scrapped his original plan. So that's why three was so fucking weird because the original plan was Desmond learns about the assassin's heritage in one. He starts training as the assassin in two and Assassin's Creed three was going to be an entirely modern yeah. game of like Desmond taking out the abstergo in new york that was the entire plan and then which makes like, sense uh, like when when you think about the progression of the you know climbing climbing towers and things it's it's kind of stunning that they've never had you do that in the modern day yeah you know what i would say is 
you guys remember like way back this is like totally tangential but remember when everybody was guessing that the ending of lost said they were at they were in purgatory and so like yeah. lindelof and abrams were like no they're not in purgatory you guys are so wrong and then the ending happens like oh yeah they were in basically in purgatory right like i kind of feel like ubisoft kind of like when people are like, oh, the next one's going to be in Japan, the next one's going to be in China, like there's all these like strong indications. The next one's going to be like, uh, you know, uh, Aztecs or Mayans or like all these. They're like, no, you guys are all wrong. Look, it was the American Revolution all along. And then like kind of like n- nobody wanted that, though. That was such a weird setting. And like I would say that China and India, the games that got side scrollers were far more promising settings than. God. Fucking the you know? India one makes me want a proper Indian as that's yeah. great. Yeah, the, the 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 visuals in that game are gorgeous and the setting's just perfect and I, it, all that stuff is there, but nothing that what they did about three made sense. And then they redeemed themselves with Black Flag, right? Black Flag's well, you know, pretty much amazing. Rogue's really good, and then it jumped you know, fell off the, the earth again with uh Unity. And Although I think I Syndicate, think was, Syndicate pretty was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd agree Syndicate was pretty good. Even though, again, I think that setting was a little too modern for running around stabbing people. Um, and that I Jack Ripper like stuff Syndicate. was so dumb. Um, but yeah, I, so do I, I, do, I don't think I liked anything about Syndicate. I, I It was a completely... <laughs> well, or, Origin is a proper reboot, right? I mean, like, this is somewhere they can go forward from here on out in basically, uh, you know, an R- way more RPG um, setting. So. That- really excites me about origin though is with how dense that game if this is going to be the new template they can't do a game every year i i don't even think that's fucking possible it, so, i'm okay with that two or three yeah, years I know. And... I want them yeah because it looks like now they're gonna because i i don't have anything to back this up but i swear the original plan was assassin's creed came out in 2007 prince of persia came out at the same time but the next year i reckon they want to do assassin's creed prince of persia assassin's creed prince of persia but then Assass- uh, prince of persia fucking bombed and all that happened but now it looks like they're doing Watch Dogs. So it's going to be like Assassin's Creed, Watch Dogs, Assassin's Creed, Watch Dogs, Assassin's Creed, Watch Dogs, which works Yeah, cool. but then I, I also have Far Cry. Far Cry, yeah. yeah. And I mean, mm-hmm. I, I feel like Ubi's kind of bumbled into a bunch of hit series. Like, d- did you guys expect Rainbow Six Siege to be huge? Uh, Division is still getting a ton of support and apparently is amazing now. Um, I mean, like, yeah, they've, they've been doing a lot with sticking with games. Um, so, I mean, I, um, I don't... I just want to say... Verona is still getting fucking updates yeah. every week. <laughs> that game's amazing, and like no one talks about it. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I it mean, did I, not have I don't a long know. tail compared to a lot of other games, uh, but at least Ubisoft has continued to support whatever they've been putting out. Yeah. Um. So Ben, what have you been? Where, where did you play over the holidays? Um. Well, surprise, surprise! Oh fuck! My cat just jumped across my cave. Can you still hear me? <laughs> we can still hear you. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Okay. Cool. Sorry, my cat just jumped off my lap and landed on my cord and I thought it might have unplugged me. Um, sorry. So, played Assassin's Creed Origin, surprise, surprise. Um, played a lot of For Honor and Hand of Fate 2 more, which I talked about on the Christmas one, so I won't really talk about that much um, again. But, so, the other things I've been playing, uh, the new Street Fighter V Arcade Edition update, which is oh, nice. fucking amazing. Like, the joke is Street Fighter V is out of beta now. Which <laughs> yeah. I've been told right. that it was basically incomplete for two years. Oh, God, yeah. The fucking Street Fighter Five at launch was rough. You could not even have, like, groups with more than two people in, like, uh, lobbies with more than two people in at launch. Fucking trash fire. Um, but, yeah, so now there's an arcade edition, which is the most insane arcade edition I've ever seen in a game. Instead of just, like, doing the fucking, like, run-throughs of, like, ladders in your normal fucking arcade modes... When you go into arcade mode, you choose whether you want to play Street Fighter 1, 2, Alpha, 3, 4, or 5, and they'll wow. build an arcade mode based on the characters from those games that are available in Street Fighter 5. Oh, nice. Does that, does that make sense to anyone? Or am I sort just talking of, nonsense? Yeah, so basically it, it sort of built, instead of like taking the mechanics from the earlier games, it sort of built it up based on, on the characters that, that were in. Yeah, so like if you do the Street Fighter 2 arcade mode, you'll only fight against like Kami, Chun-Li, Guile, Dalsim, uh, Bison, Ken, Ru, and they all will automatically default to using their costumes from that game as well. Mm-hmm. Um, then in Street Fighter 1 since fucking there's Ru and Ken from that game and no one else, they've basically like taken characters to fit the archetypes of that. So there was Geki in Street Fighter 1 who was a ninja, they replaced him with Zeku, the new ninja, there was 
Mike, the boxer dude from Street Fighter 1, who they replaced with Balrog and all that kind of shit. Um, Balrog? Also... Balrog. The Is boxer. He... Or bo- well, it's box, well, it boxer, but you know, and bison, the Japanese version. Oh, I was expecting a giant demon made of flame and shadow. Oh, no, that's a fucking Street Fighter thing that's a massive confusion. Uh, there <laughs> is three characters Vega, M. Bison, and Balrog. Who, yes. Uh, Vega, they basically, M. Bison was the boxer dude who's a very loot, like, very parody of Mike Tyson. But in Japan, but they didn't want to get sued when they released it in America, so they swapped three characters' names around, and he became Balrog, who used to be Vega, the dude with the claw, okay. and it's it's fucking confusing. But it also isn't Lord of the Rings, so you're not getting your fucking giant demon. No. Well, essentially, with, in, in fighting game circles, they call a dictator, claw, and boxer. Yeah. For, for easy identification. Because it's a fucking nightmare. Um... <laughs> Like, I don't know why they didn't swap two character names. Why the fuck did they, like, include a third character in it? What the fuck was the point of that? Um, anyway, who knows? they also added in Sakura, who is my second favorite Street Fighter character, so I'm fucking ecstatic she's back. Still no Dan, so fuck that, though. Um, but they also did, like, Sakura has been wearing that schoolgirl uniform for, like, fucking a decade. And it doesn't even make sense in the continuity of the games anymore because, like, Street Fighter 4 is, like, five years after Street Fighter Alpha. She's, like, in her 20s wearing a schoolgirl uniform. It's fucking weird. So I am so excited that, like, the new Sakura is, like, she's an adult now. She's not fucking wearing a schoolgirl uniform. She's got a job and fucking paying. Her entire storyline is basically, I want to be a fighter, but also I need to pay bills. This sucks. So, that sounds depressing. Yes, like, <laughs> so how is she life dressed in general? Now? Sorry? So what is she dressed in now? Um, she's wearing an outfit of, in Japanese arcades, they have shoutcasters that come and like stand behind people that are doing really, really cool in games and be like, everyone, come and fucking look at this person, they're doing dope! She's one of them. She's got a, like, the uniform for that. Oh, okay. Uh, when, when you said, like, earning money to pay the bills, I, I imagined her in, like, uh, like, a business suit. No, she's still, like, kind of, like, just out of high school job kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. At the call, she's at the call center. Yeah, yeah to see her with, like, like, a microphone on. Mic on so. Well, yeah, it does work, I guess. Um, anything <laughs> um, else you've been playing you want to talk about? The other thing I've been playing a bunch of was the Dragon Ball Fighter Z beta, um, which is cool, but also fucked. That was an awful beta, like... Some betas, like, I know at this point beta just means demo, but there was no training mode in it, which is fucking stupid, and, like, actually waiting to get games takes forever, and I don't know why, so those are the problems with it, um, but the game is amazing and gorgeous, and everyone's seen it by now, haven't they, with the fucking cell shaded models and everything? Yeah, it looks, it looks pretty nice. It's, it's a 3D fighter, or is it, like, still 2D? Uh, it's uh, 2D. It's okay. like 3D models. But, um, it's basically uh, Marvel vs. Capcom, like the teams of three, tag people in, all that kind of oh, shit. Right. Okay. Oh, I, I but see. there is such an insane amount of like attention to detail in that game. Like if you're playing on the Namek stage, like everyone here has seen Dragon Ball Z, right? No, I I've uh... seen like two <laughs> episodes, and I'm not a fan. I like the original yeah, Dragon Ball. Me too. I'm aware of the plot. <laughs> okay, I've seen well, GIFs. That's pretty much where, where my sweet spot uh, is. The only thing I know about <laughs> Dragon Ball Z is over 9,000. That's literally all I know. And don't, do you know that Namek explodes in five minutes and takes over 30 episodes to do that? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's 12 that's I right counted. Now. I have no idea what Namek is. Is it a planet? Namek is a planet that they fight on. But, like, okay. There's just so, like. So, speaking of Namek exploding, if you're fighting on the Namek stage, right, and you finish a round with, like, the big level 3 super, like, the huge giant boss and everything, Namek will get destroyed, and the next round will be on a completely new stage, which is the ruins of Namek kind of thing. Oh, nice. And then, like, it's got things where, like, if you're, you're playing as Goku and the other person's playing as Frieza, when they start off, instead of, like, the normal just, like, like doing their pose and everything, there's basically recreated 
the bit of the show where Frieza kills Krillin and makes Goku go Super Saiyan for the first time. And that is their intro cutscene just for those two characters. It also does things where, like, um, if you have teams based on, like, certain, like, canon teams from the show, so, like, Android 18 and Krillin are married in the show. If you have them on the team together, when you do Android 18 super move, Krillin will come out and help her. And, like, just so much, like, insane attention to little details like that. Like, I've never seen that kind of thing in a fight. Like, it's really the, something uh, for the fans. Of the yeah, they are fucking going all out on this game, and it's amazing. Uh, the one thing I will say, though, is it's an Arc System Works game, which is, like, they do Blaze Blue, they do Guilty Gear, they do the Persona Fighting Game, all that kind of stuff. It's kind of plain for them. One thing they're really known for is they do really creative things with, like, the mechanic of fighting games. So they had, like, a character in Blaze Blue who was two characters, and you held a button down and did inputs and controlled, like, a second puppet, and, like, just insane shit like that. Um... So here the, the mechanics are, are fairly standard. Most of the characters are just like, yeah, they have fireballs and they do, like, there's none of that kind of, like, great, like, there's a couple of characters that have gimmicks like that, but for the most part, like, they're all just pretty standard, which is kind of disappointing. But other than that, fucking amazing game. All right, good, glad to hear it. Um, it bodes well because they're, they're coming out with this new fighting game, um, Cross Tag Battle, that's... Oh, so. that's fucked. Yeah, <laughs> I, I heard. So apparently what they're doing is... They're splitting the roster in half and saving the second half of the roster for DLC. Yeah, which, half of that game is DLC. Which That's is insane. bad in and of itself, but they're doing things like they made a huge a huge deal about how they were they're getting the Ruby girls into the game, and only half of Team Ruby is in the base game. Yeah, there's Their only half Ruby is in, and Weiss, and then you have to pay for Blake and Yang. Yeah. That's that's not cool. People are the other not thing happy. Really fucked about that is that game's a sprite dump. All those sprites are made. They're just taking sprites from all their old games except for the Ruby characters. Like, it's insane that they're all DLC. Yeah, this this is not... This kind of pricing plan is not going to go over well with the audience. Especially after a year where people kind of got fed up with exploitative pricing plans. And the thing that's super fucked that a lot of people, like, haven't realized, though, is, like there are not going to be tournaments for that game because tournament organizers are going to need to pay for the game and then, like, $100 extra for DLC for, like, 30 setups, and they're just not going to do that. Yeah, well, this is what happens when you shoot yourself in the foot, right? Pretty um, much. Yeah, so that's um, Arc System Works and what they've been putting out lately. PT, what did you play over the holidays? Well, um... My problem is that uh, essentially I'm going to be doing the backlog of 2017 and 2018. But uh, the one thing, the one game I played, and I'm several months late on this, and I talked about it a lot on the Avocado, is uh, Near Automata. Oh, yeah. yeah. That game's pretty good. Yes. Yes. And I, I talked about that a lot there. And um, some of you disagreed with my thoughts on the ending. But uh, no, no. It's a really interesting, fascinating little game that is a game of a really, really slick combat system. Kind of kind of less for what Platinum does, but I think it suits the game. And also it's a game about uh, robots who are, you know, commonly suicidal and they, you know, talk about life and stuff, all that, and lots of people die and it's very depressing. And it, I'm glad the game was made, obviously. Uh, I have no interest in playing the previous games because they're not going to have the gameplay to back it up on. Yeah. Oh, they barely have gameplay that's worth playing, even. Yeah, like, Yoko Taro really needed to be paired up with a group of people who could design good gameplay, and Kavya was not that group of people. <laughs> no. <laughs> Kavya is barely a company that could make the fucking functioning game. Have you played Drinking God 3? That thing runs at, like, 12 frames a second. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. So, yeah, you pair up with Platinum, and now, suddenly, they're playing around with camera angles in an open-world game which is ridiculous. That's and, not sudden. That was all of Nier 1. Yeah, well, Latinum made it slick. <laughs> In fact, right. Anything, I'd say the one thing disappointing about Nier Automata is they do a lot less of that playing around with camera angles than Nier 1 did. Like, Nier 1, you'd go into, like, a horror-themed house and it would go to, like, locked camera angles from Resident Evil, or you'd go to, like, a dungeon that would turn it into, like, isometric Diablo games and all that kind of shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, Automata is a little bit less adventurous in that regard, 
but it's still pretty damn wacky sometimes. I mean, I did. I mean, I I think a lot of people point out like the basically the real last fights around on Route C where things just switch back and forth from shooter to fight. And That's you're... fucking amazing. It's terrific. And yeah. so I, I think we'll, we'll try not to spoil it too much for people who haven't played it. But it it does kind of integrate everything you've learned so far into one climactic battle. But so, so yeah, that, so I was, you know, playing that a lot there. And the funny thing is it kind of reminds me of like one of the things I really don't like about the modern generation. And that, that comes with, this is like the, the most picky thing in the world, but okay. So some games and uh, FF12 Zodiac Age was another one. They, they will keep the clock running. Even if you put it, put the game on standby. So I'm pulling up near thinking, oh, I've played this game and played this a long time. 99.59. What? I've played this game for 100 hours? No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like that. And then the next thing that came up is um, for some inexplicable reason, I bought a Wii U like two months ago. So I, I own a Wii U now. And I'm playing. <laughs> yeah, that really is inexplicable. <laughs> and I'm. And I'm buying, and I bought Twilight Princess HD. I had not played Twilight Princess since once on GameCube, so it's kind of fresh in my mind. But I, but I also like to, you know, press it on sleep, and you know, I don't know, put it, you know, put it up there, and you know, go to bed or something. And I wake up, and it's like I'm 19 hours in the game. No, I'm not. So that's just <laughs> that, that's like just super. It's like super picky, but it's those those nonsensical thing. Uh, so yeah, it's that. So Nier kind of took over the holidays, so to speak. I've just been kind of picking at games, trying to... I'm trying to finish games that didn't really catch me on, you know, the first time I played it. Like, Uncharted 4 was like, I don't care about Nate's brother, like, at all. <laughs> oh, shit, I forgot. I have been playing that a bunch, and I kind of hate it. It's okay. I mean, it's... I think I kind of grew out of it, which I grew out of that type of series, which one of the games on my expected list, provided it comes out in 2018, kind of falls under that category. It's like, boy, do I actually want to play this? You know, this like, like this was my... Yeah, so that's just... the thing that you were just anticipating, but now you're no longer that person who liked the first game. And, and, and yeah. I'll say it out loud. I'll say it out loud. It's Kingdom Hearts 3. I'll say yeah. it out loud. Yeah. Where, I'm thinking myself, where I'm thinking to myself, like, okay, I liked 2. 2 was, like, a thousand years ago. <laughs> like, <laughs> like was do, fucking do... PS2, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Holy shit. So, and so I'm thinking to myself, yeah, like... Fuck. 2 came out the same time as Resident Evil 4. Oh, Jesus. We're up to Resident Jesus. Evil 7, and they're up to Kingdom Hearts 3. Well, well they did well... all those, like, weird-ass spin-offs in between, right? It's like, oh, you know, yes. Yeah, they, we... they, w- they went into decimal numbers at some point. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was no it was like no the ds game was like a fraction it was like 357 by 26 it's, or something it was a uh, and then there was 358 2. over two days hd final chapter prologue which is two, my favorite video game name ever no no and like this all the secondary games is like final prologue chapter 2.8 or some shit yeah chapter 2.8 yeah so the there's also dream drop distance which is right. a thing which yeah. is a three? Which is three D? Get it? Ha ha! How clever! <laughs> I love that whole genre of games where they just like really try and force an acronym that'll give it the console name, like fucking uh, Castlevania: Dawn of Sorrows for DS and shit. Oh yes. You know what? You know what else? Like this is getting way off video games. You know who else does that? Like the really tortured Marvel acronyms. Comics? Sorry. Marvel Comics. Well, yeah, they do that with like Shield and shit. <laughs> um, no, even even weirder. Medical studies are named like that. Medical studies try to come up with the most ridiculous acronyms, just so that they can have like an acronym. So they'll find a way to spell out heart if they're doing heart research, or like I don't know, like even ridiculous things like rafter or board or things like that. So like apparently medical researchers are all just like huge gamers or something. I don't know. What they're, what they're thinking of. Well, Amer- uh, the American uh, government does it all the time. You know, the Dream Act. Oh yeah. The so Act. They. I. I. I don't know of any other countries doing that. It's certainly. Like, which, it's not. Not something I've ever heard of us doing here which in Australia. Which congressional but... staffer would like? 
wasted three <laughs> afternoons coming up with that. I wonder. And oh, I mean, just like in the last year, they tried to the the Democrats tried to pass the Coffee or the Coffee Act, which was something about something about tweets. It was something about the president's tweets. Um, oh, and uh, and then the, there was this somebody proposed something about the shithole act. And it's just, I mean, oh dear. I, I'm pretty certain they're all political stunts, but you know, it's, I, maybe they're all gamers too. Maybe, um, maybe they're maybe they're their uh, staff members are. Yeah, yeah. I mean, every t- every Marvel now and then, yeah. you 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 read this article on Kotaku or Gizmodo about how somebody edited the the Wikipedia article of some game from the White House, and you're like, well, <laughs> okay, they're on their lunch break. Who gives a shit, right? Um. Anyway, uh, moving away from from politics and back towards <laughs> Nintendo. Uh, <laughs> although some people would say that Nintendo should run for office, I'm not one to, to stop them from doing that. Uh, they had a couple of of, of uh, promotional videos come out for upcoming products. The first is something pretty regular; they do pretty often. It was uh, a mini Nintendo Direct. And the second was something a little bit more unconventional. It, they unveiled a line of new, let's call them cardboard Odd peripherals, book. called Nintendo Labo? Labo? Labo, Labo, yeah. Labo, okay. I was calling it Labo, but that doesn't seem right. Um, yeah, so they unveiled these, this new... Sheriff Lobo. Pardon me? I was calling it Sheriff Lobo. Sheriff Lobo. Like Lobo is in like, uh, like Spanish for a wolf. Um... Oh, yeah. sure. No, it's just a Simpsons joke. <laughs> L- Lobo, Bring Lobo back is Sheriff coming. Lobo. Okay, I, I apparently there's I have like a repository of Simpsons quotes in my head, but I just have like holes where some quotes should be, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so what do you what do y'all think of Labo? I, I frankly. Uh, I- Frankly, I am. It's not something that I'm personally going to do, but I'm. You know what? I am. I'm thrilled. I hope people get into it. I hope people are creative about it. I've come to realize that stuff is not all for me. Like, say that entire the entire segment before uh, I started talking, when you guys are going on about you know <laughs> Assassin's Creed and like I haven't played a single game in that series, so I'm just going to be quiet. And Save yourself like, the trouble. It ain't that great. Ben's going right. to kill me now. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but but no, it's just I think that ho- if this helps folks in any way, I mean, it's, you know, kids, younger, you know, young people, like maybe maybe they'll become like engineers out of this, or maybe they'll learn some sort of creativity from it. I, I don't think this is harmful in any way, shape, or form. I think I reckon as a concept, I think it's fucking amazing. I love the whole kind of maker aspect of it, and like I've been talking to my mates that have like kids, and they're like they're really excited for it and everything. I think it's all really great. Except for the price, because holy shit! Like, yeah, it's like a hundred Australian dollars for one of these things. It's seventy bucks US or a hundred dollars Australian, and yeah. I get that that includes the fucking Software. game and everything as yeah. well. But yeah. like, these things are made for kids, which means they're gonna last like a fucking month or two at most. And yeah, you have to. Yeah, it's it's not even the price one. itself; it's the price combined with the fact that it's made of cardboard. It's really fucking fragile. Yeah. Corrugated cardboard is not the material you want to use here. Yeah. Because, like, they came out and said on the day it got announced that, like, we're going to be posting the plans online for free. And that was awesome. That would, that, like, took away all my objections to it and everything. Then the next day, they're like, oh, shit, actually, no, we're not. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the other, the other problem is, like, with the whole cardboard thing. I read this news story where apparently a janitor at the German game rating agency thought that it was, like, garbage. And he almost threw it out. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, so um, that just goes to show you that maybe this is not the right material to be using. But hey, well, maybe it else, just feels like... What else could you make it out of? Of course, the joke know, is... Children's skulls? The, I don't know. <laughs> the joke is, of course, well, clearly they needed to use up the cardboard from all the Wii U's they didn't sell. Ha ha ha. Uh, the other joke is it's releasing on 420 with an MSRP of Price 69. 69. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Yeah. Yes. Nice. So of course Yeah, so of course Nintendo's uh, all in on the memes. Um so moving away from Labo and back to like the direct mini, do 
Do you guys watch it at all or, or keep track of no. the announcements? I, I did see it, yes. And I, I guess I was curious because everyone was saying, oh, it, as someone who owns a Wii U, again, haha, yay me. Uh, I was kind of thinking to myself, okay, how many of these games are they going to transfer over from Wii U to, to Switch? And I only saw one, which was uh, Donkey Kong Country, yeah. Tropical Freeze. And I'm thinking, yeah, sure, I'll buy that on Switch. And I'm thinking to myself, boy, I hope they don't transfer over like uh, the Zelda games, which I own both of them now on Wii U. And I, I should, I say, I'm sorry. I mean, Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. I own Breath of the Wild on Switch, obviously. Uh, but, or like Captain Toad, I want to buy that. Or things like that. Like, Part of me just wants to note my investment because I'm petty. <laughs> yeah, I, I could see that, especially because you inexplicably bought a Wii U. Um. <laughs> felt like I it was like you know. inexplicably bought a Wii U. I said inexplicably bought a Wii U at the end of 2017. Like, but yeah. I bought a Wii U, and it's uh, like dust in the lounge room. But fuck it, 2017. It's re- well, it's refurbished at least. I mean, it, was, okay. it wasn't ex- it wasn't expensive. Yeah, fair call. Yeah, if, if there are a couple of games you really want to play, I can get that. If you really want oh. that that Fire Emblem Shin Megami Tensei crossover, you can get it. I I bought I uh, I purchased a Wolf Link amiibo. I am part of the problem. That's cool. Whatever whatever makes you happy. Um, for me, I was... I never played any Wii's. I never bought any Wii's or like Nintendo has really passed me by for like the last eight years. It's I've I've kind of assumed it's not my thing, but. Now Wait, I'm are, you read, are you reading from my script? Or? <laughs> <laughs> Me and you both, man. How dare yeah. you? Yeah. I will say. But now I've seen the Switch like... in action and I'm thinking, what am I missing? Like, this this shit looks really cool. So you're no longer reading from Kappa Script. Got it. <laughs> two or three games on each Nintendo system that I've bought the console. Like, I bought a Wii U entirely for Bayonetta 2. I don't give a shit about anything else on that fucking console. <laughs> I bought a Wii, I think mostly for House of the Dead Overkill, because it came with cool guns. Um, and, yeah, other than that, I like I haven't played a fucking Mario game in a long time. And Odyssey is good. I wouldn't say it's, like, yeah. the greatest game ever or anything, but I, I enjoyed it. It was my favorite game of the year, so... Like, yeah. I'm getting a Switch mainly because of all the indies on it, and like, I'm still waiting for them to bring out the fucking of, D-pad. Speaking of indies and Australia, Golf Story is pretty freaking great. Golf Story and Mr. Shifty. Oh, yeah. I don't. I haven't heard of Mr. Shifty. I mean, I've heard of it, but it's I don't know what it's about. It's basically um, Hotline Miami if you had Nightcrawler's teleport ability. Cool. Yeah. I'm down with that. Um, and speaking of Nintendo and Australia, I noticed in, in the uh, video that Donkey Kong now uses bananas like boomerangs, which I find to be culturally appropriate. Yeah, that that's a shame. Making fun of you Australians down there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but speaking of things that are, are perhaps less controversial, um, <laughs> I'm actually, uh, as, as PG points out, I'm actually kind of excited for this Donkey Kong Country port, I think. You know, I, I, it's, a, it's a game I missed out on because I didn't get a Wii U. Um, and the other game that I'm excited about is, surprisingly, Mario Tennis Aces. And normally I wouldn't have cared about a Mario sports game, but they're putting a story mode in this, and I'm thinking, well, I really like Golf Story in its story mode. If this is anything like Golf Story, but with tennis and in 3D, I'm down with it. So, oh, so does the new tennis have a fucking like, proper story mode? Pardon me? Yeah. It is, oh, yeah, I haven't fucking seen anything about this game at all. Yeah, so the new Mario Tennis, it's the first game since the Game Boy Advance version of it to have a proper story mode apparently the wii u mario tennis was just garbage so hopefully this redeems the series but we'll see that really it really confuses me to have a story mode in a in a sporty like a sports-based game i i i just can't figure out who the target market is well i guess it's you but uh, well well having, having said that have been awesome I know that Madden, the latest Madden, actually had a story mode, like, get into the pros story mode, like, just the latest one. Yeah, oh, so I'm that was gushing about here. Yeah, so many Kappa, times here. Kappa love long shot. <laughs> yeah, I loved oh, it. Oh, ha- how are we forgetting NBA 4K with fucking uh, Spike Jones join? NBA 2K, you mean? <laughs> NBA 4K 2K, is, yeah. is two millennia from now. <laughs> what, whatever the, fuck it, the one that had frequency vibration <laughs> yeah. and then like freaking FIFA had 
Alex Hunter, who just like became oh, a meme. The people one's the worst by far. <laughs> yeah, remember but, when they brought him on stage at E3 and he's just like, my name is Alex Hunter, and everyone's like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> yeah, that was bizarre. Yet, that wasn't the worst FIFA interview they had that year, because wasn't that the same year they had fucking, uh, like, Ronaldo or something, like, in his 70s? And, like, just kind of, like, old man talking about video games that doesn't understand them? Yeah, they, they sometimes E3 can be very out of touch with what people Usually. Are. I wouldn't go with something, i go with usually. Oh god! Yeah. I think that's the whole reason I fucking watch E3. <laughs> Just the totally yeah. awkward presentations and like the the guys in blazers with t-shirts. Oh, like, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Gamers, woohoo! <laughs> Suit jackets and indie game t-shirts is like my favorite thing of E3. I hate them so much. Yeah, you know, I'm coming around on game on the game awards. I feel like Jeff Keighley is kind of turning that corner, and I feel like E3 is going in the exact opposite direction in a lot of ways. It's just, it's like, I, I mean, I might be a little biased here, but the Microsoft conference always just makes me sad because like they all, because all the creators are like, I'm wearing t-shirts and I'm trying to be awesome and I'm trying to be a gamer. It's like, I don't oh, man, I, I love everything that Microsoft is doing, but they, they have such a disconnect with explaining how, they, and I like Phil Spencer. I think he's him and uh, major Nelson, Larry Herb mm-hmm. are probably like the two guys who speak my gaming language the best. If I can, you know what I mean? When they talk about cross play and Xbox anywhere and backwards, it's all the stuff I want to hear, but it's so weird that when they give the speech, it's like people just glaze over. Like, you know what I mean? They just, Oh yeah. I've noticed like with the whole Xbox one X fucking thing, they basically like foisted all that off and just like, Hey, fucking Digital Foundry, talk about it for us. Yeah, and you know, with with the Xbox One X, they said this isn't for everyone. I thought that was a smart way to market it. You know, they were like, if you got a 4K, look, this makes sense. If you're in the market for an Xbox and you got a 4K, otherwise, you know, yeah. this isn't this for is like you. your dorm room console. Then yeah, don't buy this. You don't have to run out and buy it. It's fast. It's the you know, it, it's got a lot of power. But if you don't need it, you don't need to run out and get it right now. I thought that was a smart way to do it. Yeah, they. they... Is, I think it's almost like a, a testing the waters, like a market testing kind of kind of product they put out because, they, yeah, like you said, they don't expect everybody to get it. And I think they just wanted to see sort of if we make sort of this limited quantity kind of product, what's the market for people who are going to go out and get like this top of the line machine? And, and, and I think by having an, a legit top of the line, that was a smarter thing than what Sony did with the Pro, right? That Pro is kind of like a half step. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you know, upscale, point, but... Because if you're going to get a 4K console, why would you get a Pro? Like, I don't... Yeah, it doesn't make sense. All right, right, like, it's going to upscale some of your stuff, but not all of it, and it's not going to have full HDR support. Like, there's a lot of weirdness to it. So, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean, but when they get those people up on the stage, it's just... Like, remember the, the great internet explosion when they first announced xbox one and they talked about like the family sharing and the always online there is so much cool shit in right. the fucking additional announcement <laughs> the and fucking internet was no like one figured this. it out yeah exactly and that was to me that was a messaging problem because that original plan if that that I, family I, I, sharing plan is the yeah. coolest thing in the fucking world yeah. and i'm still salty we don't have it yeah that that was like but that that to me was the internet took certain things from that and ran with it and just decided to hate that and never came back around to listen to what they were trying to say. And I, I, blame, Mark, I blame Microsoft. You could have, could have oh, explained no, that a lot better. Oh, no, it's entirely Microsoft's fault. Remember? Because that was before they had Phil Spencer. They had, they had that fucking yeah. bald cunt. And yeah. it's like, if you want a like, non-connected console, buy a 360. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, Don Matrick. What company yeah, that oh, yeah. is he Is he still at Zynga or did he bankrupt that place? I think he uh, left Zynga. I, I haven't okay. heard. I haven't heard of anything from since then from Farmville, which was uh, ten years ago now, probably. Now. Um, yeah, Phil Spencer's much much better at messaging. I think the problem that Microsoft's been having lately is they just they've had problems canceling high profile exclusives like uh, Scalebound, yeah. and they haven't been able to attract more high profile exclusives. And a lot of games that they've been planning to put out have been canceled, uh, not canceled, delayed. Like Crackdown's been delayed by like over a year now. Yeah. Um, so that's Crackdown's the... delay. I reckon. Yeah. Like I don't have anything to back this up, but I would say it's strongly based on them having to run back the always online thing because a big part of that game was supposed to be the cloud processing destruction, and then they can't 
do that anymore. So I reckon a lot of that game had to be redesigned based around that. Yeah, I, I know they've they've basically really. I think they hired a new guy. I only remember his name is John Booty or something like that. Matt Booty, something like that. <laughs> they're, they're they're trying to push back into the exclusives realm, but for all they've been saying, all their messaging has been, we don't want exclusives anymore. Because if you think about it, a lot of stuff that they would have had as an exclusive is PC and uh, Xbox well, now. I think they're, now. They're hitting the PC market a lot harder. Them means a Microsoft exclusive, not an yeah. Xbox exclusive. Which because I'm if cool you're with. buying it on a fucking Windows machine, they're like, they still want you to fucking buy Windows. It's still their whole ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, so day. if you look at PC exclusives yeah. versus PS4 exclusives, that's going to be a, a, a bloodbath, you know? Um, so yeah, I mean, and console-wise, PS4 has a clear advantage, but... I think Microsoft's going a total different way with it and saying, hey, you know what? You like Cuphead? Here it is on your PC and your Xbox. You know, and that's not, a, I guess that's technically not an exclusive anymore, but either way, you're, pe- you're, you're playing on Microsoft something or other, you know? Yeah, like you still get a you gave Microsoft money to get Windows, so fucking. Yeah, at the end of the day, they, at the end of the day, they don't care where you're playing as long as they get the cut of that money. I and mean, if you're buying Cuphead on Steam, they're not seeing that cut. But if you're buying it through the Windows Store, then they're perfectly happy. Plus Why the hell would. Why the hell would you buy anything from the Windows Store? If you want to play it on Xbox as well as on your PC. Oh, that's you true. Yeah. You're not going to get the Play Anywhere um, through Steam. I would also think with the Play Anywhere thing, the fucking cross-play on it is amazing and like has me way more excited for games that I wouldn't have been excited that, for otherwise. That's, when we get to predictions for 2018, cross-play is going to be my biggest, my number one prediction. I, I don't see how everybody can keep these little walled gardens up for too much longer. Yeah, the right now is, it's mainly oh, sorry, Sony to... being the holdout, right? Because even Nintendo's allowing crossplay. Yeah, like, yeah. Friggin' Nintendo. Yeah, you can crossplay Minecraft like on Xbox and Switch or something, can't you? Yeah, yeah. Same with Rocket League. And then what was the game where they accidentally enabled crossplay? It was Fortnite. Yeah, uh, yeah, Fortnite. They <laughs> like, pressed a button, like, oh fuck, Wait, how bad? You flipped the switch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're gonna run out of excuses to not have crossplay and. I mean, I think that's going to be 2018. I think that's going to be the year that, that gamers finally get to. You know why I think it's going to come about? is not so much because of Microsoft and Sony, but let's say you're a developer of, I don't know, let's say Elder Scrolls Online, right? And you're seeing your population dwindle, but you're having to keep servers up for PlayStation and servers up for Xbox and servers up for PC. And you know damn well them servers aren't that different, you know? And if you could just shove everybody into just one game world, think of all the money you could save, right? Like, yeah, uh, there it, is. It, and all these dead games that like have like 500 people playing it, but it's you know over three systems. And it's you, like, it's triple 1, the player base, right? Yeah, exactly. And I, it, it just gets so frustrating. I mean, every time we talk Destiny on the board, it's oh, but I'm on PS4. Well, you know what I mean. I get that there's some reason you don't want mouse and keyboard people playing against each other competitively, but we should be able to do a strike together, right? I mean, that's not going like, to hurt anybody. Well, they it, have fucking cross-play with mouse and keyboard versus controllers on Gears of War. And yeah, it yeah. Works. Like, it's not fair. I don't think anyone's fucking doing tournaments that way, but it's fine. Yeah, but I, I think I think cross-play to me is the one thing, you know, I know it, it gets kind of lost in all the other angry stuff that, you know, everybody's on about these days, but... I mean, crossplay to me is is the one thing you could say it's better for everyone. There's no losers really in crossplay yeah. because it, I'm still going to buy the game on PlayStation. You're still going to get the same money, you know. And I'm just going to play with my buddy who has an Xbox. What's the difference? That was one thing that came up with the fucking Dragon Ball Fighter Z beta. Like my mate was playing on um, PlayStation. I don't have PS Plus, so I had it on Xbox. Can't play each other. Like fucking, why not? Yeah. And so yeah. then we we're all on Facebook, like me and all my mates that I play fighters with, and. Like having to coordinate what system we're buying it on, otherwise we can't play each other. Even though like we were playing crossplay on like Street Fighter all the time, playing it on Killer Instinct all the time, it's never a problem there. But then, fucking, it's just well now that you have a off. third a a third real player now with the Switch, right? I mean, yeah. it's just gonna it's gonna push stuff into that direction even more. Well, I should say a fourth if you count PC, you know. So you got four people in, competing for, you know. What, what let's say whatever the new shooter is well now you've got four people you got four distinct player bases trying to all play the same game why can't we put them all in the same spot and let them play and then if you want to buy it for switch and i want to buy it for pc who cares we'll still play together you know and it would be like so much better for especially like because my main focus is mainly on fighters and everything like the more niche the fighters get 
then fucking dividing them across player bases like actually kills games. There's yeah, reasons so like that's I was Skullgirls was crossplay, you would still be playing Skullgirls, but it's not. So you're not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was gonna so, bring up that. Uh, I'm sorry. I was gonna bring up that uh, Killer Instinct is available on Steam, mm-hmm. and their player base is nothing. Right. So that, that's exactly my point. If you have, if you segment the player base and it falls below a critical threshold of being able to find games quickly or match make properly, then people are going to leave the game and it's going to lead to this death spiral. Whereas if you have everybody in the same player base, then you're not going to hit that threshold as easily. I'd yeah, also and point I mean, out that um, Killer Instinct went to Steam after the game was basically done and the player base had already been like going away to other games. That was mm-hmm. like, that's the reason they put it on Steam because they're like, fuck it, no one's like. Everyone that wants it has already bought it on like the platforms we own. So we, I, 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 most devs I don't think have a would have a problem with it. With, with you know what I mean with supporting both or supporting crossplay. I mean it really is weird to me that there's just this one holdout that and people aren't you know anywhere near as angry at Sony as I, as I think people should be for for dragging their feet on this. Oh, I, I, I shit mean, on them all the time for it. Yeah, but I exclusives are one thing. I mean, like, I, I, I get it. I shouldn't be able to play Horizon Zero Dawn on my Xbox. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, though, if, if me and you are, or, you know, are want to play a, a couple matches of Mortal Kombat, who cares what system you own it on? You own the game. The servers are all, you know, suppo- uh, can be accidentally linked, apparently, <laughs> and nobody even notices. So what's the big deal, you know? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, this- I, I just don't. Like, conspiracy theory time, I think, like, there's a possibility that Epic enabled crossplay in Fortnite on purpose to kind of, yeah. like, force Sony's hand. Just to show, oh, yeah. like no doubt in my mind that that yeah. was not an accident. Yeah, that Epic doesn't seem like the kind of, they're not that Bush League, you know, that it would be like, whoops, here we go. I, yeah, I, like, I, what is fucking Sony going to do to Epic? Like, oh, you bet, well, fine, you can't use fucking Unreal on the PlayStation then. Yeah. Like, <laughs> No, I, I I think it's kind of a weird it's it's a weird time right now, and I mean I, I'm all for you know let let's stop being anti consumer with loot boxes and stuff like that. But this this generation, I think we've all talked about this at one point or another on the podcast. This generation is the most fragmented my game playing friends have ever been. I mean, it's not like it was where everybody played on the PlayStation Two, then everybody played on the 360, and now it's like everybody and plays fucking everything. Back, like- PlayStation 2, it didn't really matter because you just fucking went over to your mate's place and grabbed a controller. There was yeah. no one lost. <laughs> yeah, because that's when, that's when, like, couch co-op existed. Yeah. That kind of died recently. So that That's my big prediction for 2018. Sorry, I launched into that a little prematurely, but... No, that's I, fine. I just do Actually, now, let's then? do predictions first, and then yeah. we'll go back to what we're anticipating. So speaking right. of... Um, you, you mentioned loot boxes and microtransactions. My prediction for 2018 is... Triple A games and multiplayer shooters and multiplayer games in general will start marketing themselves by saying, "Hey, we don't have loot boxes in our game." That's gonna that's yeah, gonna become gonna a selling point. Oh, I disagree with that. <laughs> I, I, w- I wish I was that optimistic. I, I don't think they're going anywhere. I really don't. Dream okay, okay, okay. That no, no, no. Cool Work thing, with me here for a second. If you look at the financial like information. Like Overwatch made three times what it made on sales on loot boxes. Like it's become the major okay, so majority. I, I think oh, you guys no, are misinterpreting what I'm saying. saying I'm not saying that games will stop including them. I'm saying the games that don't have them will market that as will use that as a selling point. Yeah, I, I mean, I think I you're talking. Definitely like, see that. Yeah, I, I, I would say if if you don't have a loot box in your game, that's a good selling point. But I would rather hear. I want to hear what what games are doing with loot boxes from here on out. I don't want it to just be like, oh, there's also microtransactions game. I, like, I'm going to actually spend a little bit more effort looking to what is in those microtransactions. We've talked about this a lot, I mean, of course, this year, but cosmetic shit, I'm fine with it. I don't care. I can live without having that. I mean, you very rarely hear st- people complain about Overwatch, you know? But it, there's, a point be- there's a point between, I would say, pay-to-play, which everybody hates, and cosmetics where you're getting into a gray area. Do you know what I mean? You're like giving I, me like experience I mean, for me, it's buffs not a gray or area. for me, it's like if you go beyond cosmetics, then I don't want yeah. to play your game. But that, yeah. I mean, other people I understand are going to put that line in different places. But for me, I'm, I'm just like, if you're modifying the game and this isn't a free to play game, I've already plunked down, you know, 
thirty, forty, fifty dollars. I'm not, I don't want to give you more money for like just so I can be competitive. You know. So let me ask you this though. So let's say I don't know, but, uh, anime shooter. 2018 comes out. <laughs> I'm I'm so so like and, and okay, say, look, fair. We're not, to we're not going to have loot boxes. We're not going to sell the season pass, but the game's 99 bucks. Yeah, sure. You'd buy it. The game costs here, so. Oh yeah, I don't know. Australia would be five thousand dollars, and they'd also <laughs> cut out any reference to drugs for some reason. <laughs> no, no, that was that was the genesis during the late era. Like it was uh, like virtual racing was a hundred bucks, and Fantasy Star Four, which is well worth a hundred bucks, I should clarify at the time. <laughs> yeah, because I, I mean, I was thinking about actually when I was reading uh, the Nintendo Power feature on the site, I was thinking about how games used to routinely sometimes hit a hundred bucks. You know, even back then which was ridiculously expensive at the time, you know? Um, so, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, that's been my thing about microtransactions is if that goes away, I mean, there is going to be another way where they're going to get that money because games yeah, ain't well, getting any cheaper to make. Change the pricing point. If you have to charge I'm, 70 yeah. bucks for it, then charge 70 bucks. Inflation exists. Yeah. Like, I, it's... I'm fu- you know, to me, the I think it's probably a lot has to do with your when you got into gaming, like what the era you were in. I got into gaming really during the era of the the – not the DLC, but the expansion pack. Uh-huh. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you buy the game, but then it's understood if the game sells well and does well, you know, six months from now, a year from now, there's going to be a $40 expansion pack that adds a good amount to the game. But, you know, if you don't buy that, you're pretty much shit out of luck. You, you know, that game ends for you. So I'd be okay with the expansion packs making a comeback, which they kind of do with the season pass thing. But season pass is such a, you know what I mean? It's such a nebulous term now. One game season pass is another game's free DLC, right? Yeah, so There's so much shit in games at the moment that is like an accepted term that people know what it means. It doesn't actually mean anything. Yeah, like season pass, game of the year edition. <laughs> like, I was talking to someone and they're like, "Wait, are they allowed to call that a game of the year edition?" I'm like, "It it doesn't fucking mean anything." Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, mean it's like, it, it doesn't even have to win a fucking game of the year award. You can just put yeah. a fucking game of the year edition. It doesn't mean shit. It doesn't mean jack all. So I mean, mm-hmm. I'd, I'd be okay if we went back to a spot where game stayed sixty bucks, but it was understood that season passes or whatever you call them go back to like full prices, but you're getting substantially more. It's not horse you know DLC. It's okay. not. I say we go back further. I want shareware back. <laughs> <laughs> that that was fucking shared on floppy do. diskettes. <laughs> I'm talking Wait. fucking Apogee and fucking MS DOS games where you I... get like the first third of the game for free, and then they're like, okay, now buy the rest, motherfucker. You're yeah, probably like not Commander far King, off, man. though. Um, w- with the new NVIDIA service, and you guys probably don't have uh, EA access, do you, in Australia? No, uh, I think we do, yeah. Do you? Oh, oh man. Five bucks a month to play basically any EA game for, I think it's like 12 hours, any new release EA game, uh, and then you get a discount on it, and then they have like a, a bunch of games in their vault that you can play anytime. To me, that's that's pretty cool. Um, that's, and that's pretty cool. I yeah. would, I would definitely. I mean, the the whole concept of letting you play a little bit and then charging you a shitload to pay to play the rest. I kind of love that because I <laughs> I pl- I bought a lot of games just because I thought I might like it and then it's garbage. So uh, you know, I, I I've spent a lot of money on games that I played a tiny bit of, thinking, well, I'm not going to like this, but it's free. Yeah, and then I loved yeah. it. Yeah, but if game like prices jump to a, demos, right? Yeah, if game prices jump yeah. to hundred bucks, that's where you got to go back. You got to go back to demos the and shareware. Is, and no, nah, the problem with demos is I've talked to a bunch of indie developers about it. Like uh, on the indie side, the difference between having a demo out and not is like the difference between an extra two months of polish on the game. And mm-hmm. there's yeah, there's oh, I forget the exact specifics before it, but someone did the maths and like this big long fucking document about it how a demo will only make you earn less money. It never makes you earn more. Like, through... Well, like the yeah, people is that the indie the side, demo. or also the AAA no, side? No, like, that's... It, because basically how it works is, the people that are interested in the demo are gonna buy the game. Like, if they don't have access to the demo, they're still interested in the game and are probably gonna buy it. There are people, though, there's a large enough percentage of that group that will buy the demo and be like, actually, this isn't very good that will then turn them off of buying the game who would have bought it otherwise. Oh, so like and me in Destiny 2. <laughs> yeah. Well, fucking, that's why I don't, don't, I don't own Destiny, because I played the beta and was like, this is shit. Like, yeah, I mean, it, it, it can go both ways. Like, for like a small subset of people, like, I was actually on the fence 
when it came, when it came to buying Nier Automata. I played the demo. It's like, huh, this is pretty good. I bought it. I ended up loving it. So, I, like, it, it can go both ways. But especially for, like, I, I understand, especially if you're a smaller studio or even the larger studio, you, have, you do have to take time to make sure that the demo works properly as a separate chunk of the game. And that, I think that's yeah. why you get so many betas that are demos. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because you kind of got that little weasel word of saying, oh, you know what? This wasn't really a demo. We're going to change all that stuff you didn't like by the time the game actually comes out, you know? Right. And sometimes demos, especially in the earlier earlier generations, are just these half-baked, not half the features aren't in there. I mean, the ultimate example I say is, I mean, a lot of people back in the day bought Brave Fetsu Musashi for the Final Fantasy VIII demo. Mm-hmm. Uh and boy, that demo is not representative. Well, I remember of that game. those days. Yeah, like the the FF8 demo is not representative of that game at all because it gives you this idea that oh, you have to summon the Guardian forces like every turn because you don't hit anything. It's like <laughs> it's like, and then that push that idea got pushed to the game itself. Like oh, I have to summon GFs every turn and like you know the junction system. What the hell is that? And well, it, that'll make that game like three times as long summoning GFs every turn. <laughs> Oh my god! But no, Those but fucking long animations. Oh Jesus! But but no, it's like stuff like that just does not help the game, any game's reception. If stuff like the demo just puts it out there, like, hey, here's this cool thing. It also takes like 15 years to do, but yeah. Do you it's... remember when some games would do demos that were actually not anything from the main game and like give you more? Stuff um, yeah. The so original you know, like, did that Half-Life? very recently. Half Life. There is yeah. Half Life in that. Yeah. So you know I what game? Warcraft Three had like a mission that was happens in Warcraft Three in a cutscene where you're like going overseas, and then if you play the demo, they like land on an island, and they meet the trolls and all that shit, which makes Warcraft Three not make any sense if you play it without the demo because a bunch of orcs leave one place and they land with a bunch of troll friends when they get to the other island. Yeah. So that actually turned out to be something they did for. Um... A very, a very recent example of this is Danganronpa V3. Uh, the demo is like this really super meta version of the game that like references like the player and breaks the fourth wall and does a whole bunch of other weird crap. Um, and it, it introduces you to sort of the mechanics of the game. And then if you play the main game later, it like and you play the demo, it like loads items and bonuses from. Oh, that's out. cool. So oh, shit, that's what PT was, wasn't it? Like yeah. that wasn't going to be well, a part of the actual game if that game ever existed. Yeah, Silent Hills. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the, the hard thing. thing. Yeah. Oh, and to give a really old example of this, um, I can't believe I remember this, but Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets did that as well. Huh. Yeah, the demo was just like this thing where you're essentially just running through a dungeon, casting spells. I think at, at people. I don't know. It's it's really sh- it's a really shitty game. Um, it's it like, it's either that or demos that are like all fourth wall in your face, like the Xenogears demo was. So you basically play like the first hour or so of the game. Like you do something, then you come back, and then whoosh, you know, play the rest of the game. But no, like on one portion of the game, you start you start going in there, and then two characters who aren't even remotely in the game at the beginning say, like, "Oh hey, we're here. Wait, we're not in the script. What is this? Oh hey, we're just playing for the demo. Is that cool? Okay." Like, that's pretty cool. Yeah, just dumb things like that. But yeah, I mean, if if you're gonna put out a demo and you don't want to kind of spoil the main game or turn people off the main game, I think it's sort of the best way to do it, uh, because that way people who are already interested in your game will will play it anyway and will try to spread it by word of mouth, and people who aren't super interested in your game might play it and enjoy it. Whereas if you're like just taking a chunk out of your game, well then, you know, somebody will some some people might say, okay, I've had my fill, and they won't buy the game in the end. So, I don't know, it's a tough balancing act, and I think people are still trying to kind of figure it out. Uh, and, you know, even 20, 30 years later, we still haven't figured it out, but, I don't know, it, different approaches uh, for different games, I guess. It worked really well on me for the, um, God damn it, uh, you know, the Wolf Among Us and the Game of Thrones, Tell-tale. Telltale. Yeah, the Telltale. Yeah. Yeah. They put out one episode it for free. Really well, because I never, ever wanted to play any of those, and they didn't interest me at all. <laughs> And then the game, the the first episode of Game of Thrones came out, and I was like, "Well, it's free," and I, jeez, oh, I loved it so much. And now I've played, you know, almost all the Telltale games. So it's shareware. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, what yeah. It is. They did the same thing with um with like a, a 
Walking Dead 1.5 type release. It was between one and two. Do you know what I'm talking oh, about? Like oh, right. Days old. Yeah, like 10, 98 days like or whatever Order it was days. called. Yeah, that's it. There you go. <laughs> it was like throwing out numbers then. Nah, some, um, some number of days. That, that was paid DLC. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I believe so, yeah. yeah. But I, I enjoyed it, whatever time I had with it. Um, speaking of other predictions, I have one more that I wanted to mention, and it's that... Um, uh, actually, I actually have two more, but one that I think I, I should I should definitely mention is um, I think either Sony or Microsoft is going to somehow try to compete with the Switch in some way, shape, or form. Like, you know, announce – like, they've, they've sort of already tried this before. They're kind of trying to compete with the Wii U with, like, phone apps that control your console, and they're going to take another kick at the can at it. I, yeah, I, could, I could see Microsoft doing it with be Sony. Because yeah. they just fucking bombed the Vita. Like, I don't think they're going to go back to that. Yeah, I would I, see Microsoft doing something with their Surface lineup. Like, yeah. a, like a Surface gaming. You know what I mean? Call it something like Surface X or something. And it, it's basically like a streaming device that maybe taps into your PC or Xbox. Um, streams right from it. Kind of, you know, does that wireless streaming everybody seems to be getting towards to right now. Like, you, you know, what's that NVIDIA service that they're coming out with? Shield, uh, wait, no. Shield? It's, for the, it's for the Shield. Yeah. Or, um, no. Yeah. Because I could see Microsoft just basically piggybacking off that and be like, yeah, sure, buy this Shield or buy this Surface tablet. It'll basically connect with your Windows 10 PC or your Xbox stream right from that device right to your Surface. So the Surface isn't really processing anything, you know? Um, yeah. Which would free stuff up the same way that the Switch does because, you know... It, who knows, you know, if you're streaming from your Xbox, you can still be watching something else on TV. Um, so I, I think that might be something that they, they have space to do. But, yeah, I don't – I don't. Sony, man, I think they've gotten burnt so many times in the handheld market at this point. I think Sony's I mean, just given up on it. Like the Vita still is, has some popularity in Japan, it's, but, yeah. It's a, it's a shame because um, I will be frank. PS4 Remote Play is really good. Like mm-hmm. even even from the P, even connecting it to my PC, just being able to play it in a small little window while I you know like you know shit posting or doing the hell I'm doing, it, it's just it's great. Like I, it makes me feel like I don't have to always be like right next to my TV. Yeah, you know, yeah. Work at that there, so I think that's great. Yeah, I've got I've got the Nvidia Shield handheld. I don't know if you guys remember when that came out a while back. It's mm-hmm. basically an Android wow, device. Wow, you actually have one? Yeah, I actually it's, yeah. It's, it's that. It, you, like, it's that five people with own one it's it, and it streams from steam and let me tell you mm. that is really cool um so oh, like I, could, oh, I was gonna say i have a steam link as well because they were doing a yeah. really cheap yeah that's the same idea that's pretty cool actually as well steam links are pretty cool yeah there, there there's there's room in there i think as more people start to figure it out it requires it's you need a. I think you need a, at least need a, t- a nine series nvidia gpu i don't know what a and b equivalent is that but like most of the yeah, so most of the ones the most people are probably at that are getting to that now, no matter what they've got. But uh, th- there's some cool room in streaming, and it, it seems like the the that on live or whatever the old service was, the technology just wasn't there. But I think we're I think we're we're much closer now than we ever were, and well, I could the streaming stream... you are talking about is more like just streaming from your personal device yes, to yeah. another because the on live thing was like streaming from a central well, server. No, it, Nvidia's got a new wasn't it? Nvidia's got a new thing called Nvidia Now. And it's basically like what on, on live was. You're streaming from the cloud to, to whatever your device is. So they're get, they're getting they're trying the on live model again. But um, back to you know, will anybody take on the switch? I think there's there's room to take on the switch, but the streaming's there now. I mean, you can stream if, if you want. It's just I don't think a lot of people have figured it out. And then the Nintendo kind of took a page out of like maybe like the Apple Playbook and just made it so easy. It's literally just pick this up, do this. They, 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 you know, took all the steps out of it, and, yeah. and I think that's why that's, people that's are, why I, are, are... I think somebody's going to take another kick at the can. I mean, it's obviously not going to be a handheld that you also plug into your TV, but I right. think they're going to try to get that market of people who like to play both on the go and at home. I don't yeah. know exactly how they're going to do that. Um, and finally, my last prediction for 2018. Um, YouTube is embroiled in, yet again, another controversy. Um that I'm sure you guys have heard of, and we're not going to rehash Logan Paul here, because, uh. um, well, I don't think he's been raked over the coals enough, because you can oh, never wait, rake him over the coals Oh, wait, are you talking Logan Paul one, not the one after that with the email? There's, an- oh, there's another one after that? 
Oh, th their latest controversy is um, they are demonetizing anyone that doesn't have like four thousand yeah, yeah. subscribers. Yeah, that's actually what I was getting to. Hours. Yeah, so that's all, that's almost like um, that's sort of a result of the whole Logan Paul controversy, where uh, as a result of the controversy, they're attacking everybody who isn't Logan Paul. Essentially, it's a really shitty thing that they're doing. Basically, basically fuck yeah. you, small creators. We don't want you anymore. Yeah, so small creators are, are being edged out, and they're going to put uh, big creators uh, with their, in their partner program. All those videos are going to go through human review. Those are the two changes they've announced. But basically it means that, well, the, the person who caused all this drama was Logan Paul, and Logan Paul receives essentially no penalty for fucking up YouTube. Um, yeah. So what I think is going to result in is a lot, like we're always starting to see it happen, but I think there's just going to be an exodus of smaller creators who are just going to go Patreon only and stream on Twitch where they will accumulate Twitch bits or whatever the currency there is now. And YouTube's going to see just the mass, a massive abandonment. I'm okay well, with that. There is, um, talk of <laughs> Amazon are apparently planning to leash, launch a YouTube competitor. I don't think it's oh, going to go Amazon super Amazon will switch, so I mean, wouldn't they basically just stream it all through well, Twitch would... or... Probably be based out of Twitch, but like uh, one that's actually like saved videos, not live streaming. You know well, what I mean? Twitch is uh, ex Twitch has been experimenting with video uploads. Like it's. In I mean, I, I know, I know. There's there's some examples of people who are really good YouTubers. Don't get me wrong. Or people who you know got their start and moved on to other stuff. But the amount of shit on YouTube is just overwhelming. I mean, like as an as an older person, you know, <laughs> like when I go on yeah, there and I look up so... anything, it's just. It's so, like yeah. if you know what you're looking for, it's just so easy to avoid that shit. Yeah, but I, I mean, I'd be okay with a little curation. I don't think everybody needs to go try to be a YouTube millionaire these days. You know, just if 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 you're, yeah, like, I, I want them to put rigor into the creator program. But then if I I want, I don't know if this makes sense. If I click on like a YouTube approved guy and he's going to give me a guide for a game, I want the content to, to be quality, right? Like I want that to mean something, not like YouTube likes this guy because he gets a lot of views no screw that i want the guy i want youtube to approve the guy because the shit he's giving me is good or informative or yeah, something i can't YouTube get anywhere else no interest in doing that they just right. want they just want to make sh basically they just want to make sure that the the, the people whom they partner with aren't putting out nazi propaganda That's yeah essentially well, they're, what they're doing or they're like, still well, not, they're, nazi well, they're, propaganda they'd probably be okay with that just as long as um <laughs> as no, long as there are no dead bodies hanging from trees because yeah, that's yeah. that's apparently that's apparently what the standard is, and um, like if we're going down that road, uh, keep in mind that they never actually took down the video. Logan Paul took it down himself after people cried out about it. YouTube just let that shit fester. Um, yeah. No, they um featured it like it was a top ten trending video or something. Yeah, and like was being promoted to front page. It wasn't even just they just ignored it. It was like being actively promoted by them. I mean, yeah, they're, they're going to say, oh, it was the algorithm. Well, fucking tweak your algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, YouTube's always been like that. They've always been kind of like, they, they, you know, for a company that's part of Google, they've always kind of acted surprised when stuff, you know, breaks their al algorithm or, or whatever, you know. They, they, they always have like a, they don't feel like they've ever had any kind of responsibility to anything, you know. Um, and, and I'm glad to see that's kind of sounds like at least it's starting to change. Yeah, so I, like for me personally, I just hope that you know these smaller creators who maybe do this as like a side gig, they can find a home, and maybe Patreon is that home. I would say probably not Patreon. They've got enough of their own shit going down that like I. Well, they did. They did they update their own exodus. Well, they did walk back all those rule changes that were controversial. They walked them back and said we're going to figure out another way to handle it, mm -hmm. and there's been a. Like, just since the beginning of Patreon, Patreon have made it clear that they're interested in one very specific kind of person, and they don't give a fuck about anyone else. And they're also seeing the um, their first major competition with Drip is starting up soon. That's the uh, Kickstarter one, right? Kickstarted. Yep. Yeah, yes, and... it's it's in beta right now, and there's a few favorite people, that, but it's not they're quite there yet. Yeah, and just, like, listening to a bunch of people from Drip that are, like, comparing their experience with Drip versus being on Patreon and just like the amount of like receptiveness that Kickstarter people show and like they're actually interested in changing it and making it better for the consumers versus Patreon who apparently just aren't not. So I mean I think for all of these platforms they all go through cycles, right? Yeah. So like 
Drip will start off being great for creators, but then five years from now, they're going to calcify and become unresponsive to creator concerns. And they're going to go through the cycle again, and then some Drip competitor is going to come up and usurp their throne. Like, it's just, they're just so going to keep going down this road. Drip, though, is they are like Kickstarter backers. Like, it's the Kickstarter people making it. And the people that are on Drip at the moment are people that have been using Kickstarter since the beginning and have seen how that evolved and have been like, Kickstarter is still good and still listens to me. It hasn't gone through that, if you know what I mean. I mean, Kickstarter mm. has had its own problems with, you know, fraudulent. Well, they, they also did like a complete, like, quality review. And then Indiegogo kind of came out and did the exact opposite with their flex funding bullshit. Do you oh, know what God. I'm talking about? So, uh, yeah, I, I think Kickstarter was like, look, if you're trying to do something shady, go over here and do it. And another site was like, yes, please come over here and do it. <laughs> so that helped. Because one of the examples of the people who are early adopters at Drip are the Rift Tracks folks. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, and they just do, they've done Kickstarters like every year to like fund their little summer summer set of movies. So, yeah, they're, they're clearly attracting people that have used the service before. And they're like, okay, tell us what, you want, what we want to know. And go for yeah. there. Yeah, so we'll see. Hopefully, I, I would like to see a system be sustainable for a long period of time. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm cynical given, you know, YouTube, the direction that YouTube has gone, the direction I am that YouTube too. I, has taken, uh, that Twitch has I, taken, etc. I'm, I'm cynical on all of it. I, I mean, I kind of, I don't want to be, you know, to, to be the old man, but go get a job, guys. Go, 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 go pay the bills somewhere, somewhere else. <laughs> Besides yelling, you know, racist oh, stuff about video games. Oh, no, so I, kids I will watch you. I, I agree. In fact, that's um, the only thing I use YouTube these days for is for basically Patreon people who do like video game archive stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there, there's a point to YouTube. There is. Don't get me wrong. But I mean, the, the vast majority of the stuff I've I, I just I've just got grown disillusioned. And I think it's because the rumor is, hey, get popular. All you got to do is get the views, get the views, get the clicks, get the numbers. I'm subscribed to like 400 people on YouTube. I fucking love it. <laughs> like, I, there are people who are going to just put out shit and they're going to try to nab views in any controversial way they can. Yeah. Like, I mean, the way, the way I see it is YouTube is kind of like, I don't know, if you want to go get a job, if you want to go work as like a Hollywood writer or actor, there are very few of those jobs. Um, like, not everybody can do it. So I think it is a legitimate career for the people who can do it and make it and aren't just view chasers like Logan Paul or PewDiePie or anybody else who's involved in some ridiculous scandal. There are a lot of people who do legitimate work on YouTube, and I want them to be able to continue doing that in some capacity. But yeah, there are people who are, you know, not going to be able to make a living off of it, just like there are people who go to Hollywood and just never get their big break. So... It is what it is, and I don't really know how to fix it at this stage, but maybe this will be the kick in the pants that YouTube needs to get its shit together. It um, probably won't be. It won't. They'll, they'll fuck <laughs> it up somehow. So what, what, what else are you guys predicting for 2018 in the world of gaming? Uh, My prediction kind of ties in with your thing of like a competitor to the Switch. Yeah. I reckon we're going to see either like a Switch Lite or a Switch Pro, like some... like Hardware dead. revision? Hardware revision, yeah. I reckon. I don't know if it's going to be kind of like the DS Lite, where it's just like smaller and a better form factor and all that kind of thing, or if they're going to go like a PS4 Pro or something like that, where it's actually a more powerful system. But I reckon, because I reckon Nintendo are getting to a point where like fucking everyone that owns a Switch already has a Switch. Like everyone that is going to own a Switch already has a Switch. We need to get more money out of them somehow. Let's make a new and shinier Switch. Um, is there anything deficient about the Switch as it stands? Anything that it doesn't that have a should... fucking D pad. <laughs> 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 I think the SD card, I've heard a lot of people complain bought. about that. The SD card? That's like... Yeah, was... that's a... I, I like the one it comes in. Oh, like there's, there's, not, enough, there's not enough onboard yeah. memory. Okay, yeah, I can it see that. It also has all the weird shit with like the fucking how you need to hook up your phone through like a weird multi like squid wire thing to get voice chat. It doesn't do Bluetooth properly. It's, it's got a lot of dumb shit on it. Um, yeah. Like, for, like this is shit that I, I never encounter because I don't really play multiplayer on that thing. But I imagine if you want to, like, play Splatoon with your buddies, it must be a huge pain in the ass. I mean, I, I, the only thing I want for a Switch, I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to buy one. Don't worry, guys. I'll finally get around to it. But I, I would hope that eventually they kind of have some kind of more of a bundle that packs all the stuff in because there's a lot of it. Like, 
must have accessories for a switch i mean there's like the screen protector the little controller holders the another sd card is what i've always heard i mean there, yeah, to me there's definitely just, want to have if you're you gotta have a anything, pro controller yeah pro i mean controller like you don't really need i'm i'm gonna be that guy i'm gonna say yeah i guess if you if you game on the couch a lot you might want it but honestly the joy con grip works it's fine yeah, but i mean just, that's yeah. what i want i just want like an like an all like a 500 dollar. you buy this this is all the switch stuff you need to get you you know yeah, I'm you know, a, a little bit streamlined, but yeah, I'll I'll, I'll get one eventually. Yeah, I'm basically because I'm into like I'm gonna either buy one as soon as Bayo three comes out, cause fuck yeah, or as soon as they release one that has a fucking D pad on. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna um, be waiting a while for that. <laughs> well, you can buy a shell for the Joy-Con off Amazon for like five bucks and just hack it together yourself. And if Bayo three comes out before they release one with a D pad, I'm just doing that. Um. My other prediction, though, is I reckon probably this E3, we're going to see Microsoft go hard on, like, exclusives because they have nothing after this year. Like, yeah. I'm trying to think of what they have because they have uh, the Pirate game, fucking... Yeah, it's Sea of Thieves list, and, and uh, Crackdown, Crackdown 3, 3, finally. Yeah. They have Crackdown 3, they have Ori, the new Ori game, and I'm assuming they're going to be another Forza this year. Um... But other than that, then... They're definitely going to announce there. a Halo. I'll, Halo I'll, 6. I'll put that one, yeah, I'll put that one to... Yeah. But yeah, I reckon we're going to see... Because there's all the talk, apparently, um, Playground Studios, the Forza Horizon guys, are making Fable 4. That's been going around a fair bit. I, I'm excited for that. Fable... If, a Fable reboot could be interesting. Fable was Fable a cool without series Peter that... Fable you is fucking exciting. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Like, yeah, hey, let's I... not have a literal con man as the lead designer <laughs> for our fucking game. Yeah, I, I, I could definitely do without him, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, like, what's the studio now? Is it still even operational? 22K? No, I, it's, oh, oh, yeah, 22K. Man, I kickstarted that dumb game. <laughs> Look, look, we that. we all we all do stupid things. Yeah, well, it, uh, mighty it, number nine. <laughs> <laughs> it, well, he was. It was sounded like it was gonna be a new Populous, which of all his games, I think Populous is the hardest one to screw up because it's a very simple game that like has a lot going on, you know. And his successor to Populous was Black and White, which is also a really fun game. Um, man, yeah, I, I, that guy. This is still in development hell yeah. on beta. I'm just yeah. looking up them now. Fucking hell. God is. I, I played the game and there was like a little. You guys remember From Dust? It was like a little, yeah. like sandboxy, oh, like ten dollar. Cool. Yeah, exactly. I was like, if God is, is ever even as good as From Dust, I will like eat a hat. Because like, <laughs> the fucked up thing about Goddess is, is, do you remember he had the game before that where he tapped on the cube? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Curiosity. Buy, like a nine thousand dollar. Told the guy it was going to change his life, and the guy won the prize. You're like, we're going to make you the first God and Goddess. <laughs> Well, no, <laughs> guy was like, yeah, cool. what does that mean? Like, the thing that he was supposed to get was he's supposed to get a profit share from every copy of Goddess sold, but they've oh. kept Goddess in beta this entire time, <laughs> so he had nothing to get anything. Oh, no. Like, it's true. They, there was a really good interview with that guy. Somebody tracked him down, and he's just like a dude, like a 20 year old dude from England. Like, he, and like, yeah, like, I remember our, reading that, and he's just like, I don't even think about it anymore. It's yeah, it's like, I don't even care about it. He's like, it's like winning the lottery, but you, you won Monopoly money or something like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that shit's kind of tragic. Um, what else are you guys... So, Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Just on the Microsoft thing, I wouldn't be surprised if we see, uh, like, Killer Instinct 2 uh, follow up to the last one, because that was pretty successful to them, and it's been, like, completely stopped development now. Um, and yeah, probably New Halo is, but I reckon they're going to go hard on fucking like actually having like, look, we have games now. You, you left off one exclusive that actually is going to make when we talk, talk about it, my most games to look forward to. And that's state of decay too. Uh, yeah. did you guys play oh, shit, yeah, actually, that at all? Cool. What yeah, a weird game that, that came out of nowhere. and was so fun. Like that's the zombie game I've always wanted, right? Like the less about like more about like surviving the apocalypse, you know, the, the survival game, and less about going around, you know, killing zombies. I, I really those respect devs that. was like, I remember when that game came out, it was part of the like, oh shit, we have to like change, a, like remove a whole bunch of shit for Australia. And those devs were super cool about it, where they like specifically said, look, we have to remove a bunch of stuff because otherwise we can't release a game in your country. But there's going to be exclusive stuff in the Australian version to make up for that. Nice. Like, 
they just seem like really really solid dudes yeah that that's one of the few like uh, so i mean if if their release is well they've got that weird like um uh shadow uh looking game uh that is multi-platform is it okay yeah uh, Faye, that is an ea game no no not that one not that one um it, it looks like what was that old game i can't remember shadow it looks like shadow complex but it's not shadow complex <laughs> they've got that state of decay sea of thieves what and crackdown three about uh, Shadow Complex, you mean like the Metroidvania with Nathan? Yeah, Drake? yeah, yeah. It's called The Last Night. The Last Night, yeah, yeah. The Tim, yeah. sorry. Milkshake Duck Game. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Milkshake Duck Game. Is that an <laughs> Xbox exclusive? Uh, it says it is. Well, it's probably Xbox and PC, oh, like all Microsoft people. exclusive, like, yeah. 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 But, um, so, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you're right. They've got to bring more than that. That's a really, I mean, that, that's neat, but, yeah, that's not going to. What does what PlayStation got? Detroit, uh, God of War. <laughs> That's, Nobody's that's, buying Detroit now, right? Uh, sadly, people buy David Cage games because they're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so you got Detroit. You got what's that zombie game that uh, they, that um, looks horrible? Days, days Gone. It. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Days Gone uh, is one of those games that I think actually looks pretty cool, but they've shown really badly. They've got um Shadow of the Colossus HD. You're right, well. though. They they, yeah, they have Last to bring They got a bunch going on. Yeah. Um. So. Well, here in PT, what are you guys predicting for 2018? Oh, I don't have any good answers to this. I'm not plugged in well enough. I've got one or two more. Um, okay. PC specific stuff because that's pretty much my world. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think this is going to be the year we finally see some crypto coin specific cards come out from NVIDIA and AMD. Uh, hopefully, so that the price on graphics cards goes down, because right now they're basically pricing themselves out of the market. Right now, um, I mean, a 1080 Ti is more expensive now when it, than when it launched because all these people use making these weird boxes to Bitcoin mine or whatever, right? Oh yeah, because the the processors on on the graphics cards are good for that for some reason. Yeah, they're good for that, but they're. I mean, I'm sure that if Nvidia or AMD really put their minds to it, they can make processes that are better for that and and hopefully clear up this market right now because it's an expensive time to build a computer if you guys have priced anything um so i mean i think that's one thing you start to see uh crypto cards or whatever they're going to call them and this one's going to hurt but i think that valve is going to split off steam and what's left of valve and sell off their ips I, i i think i think the dream is over of them ever releasing another game and i think steam is what they're going to do from here on out see i i don't I, reckon that one. They're making a shitload of money off of Dota. See, what I think they'll do is more and more, instead of splitting them off, they'll still own the IP. They'll just license them off for spinoffs like Bridge Constructor Portal. Yeah, something like that. I, I just, I don't think they want to make games anymore. I think they want to make DLC. And I think they want to, like, their big exciting game for the last 10 years is Dota 2, which is, I mean, they didn't make that game. Let's, yeah, let's be honest. It was a Warcraft mod. I mean, that they basically ripped off, and a card game based on Dota. Oh yeah, artifact. Oh, (laughs) artifact has more. Yeah, the the artifact teaser has like five times as many dislikes as likes on YouTube. (laughs) The art, the fucking. Have you seen the video of the actual like haul when that got announced? Yeah, it's like a groan. Like, yeah, it's just a like this all the anticipation, just a. Aww. I I just I think they're done. I mean I, I I I've been wrong before. Don't get me wrong, but I I just don't I don't feel like that they feel like making games anymore. I think they said, okay, look, we can buy a game. Like what they basically did was buy Dota two, right? Uh, they didn't really develop it, do much. I mean, they did a little tweaks and stuff here and there. I'm sure, but that that was a, a pretty much a game that somebody was going to come up with anyway. And League of Legends has been whooping their ass anyway, so okay. mobas are dying out. The last game they means that they didn't buy off other people because Portal was... They bought Portal. Fortress, yeah, yeah, it's Tim Swift's Fortress creation. A spectacular drop. Um, Team Fortress was a Team Fortress was a mod component. that they bought. Yeah, Team Fortress yeah, was a so mod that they bought. Is and Half-Life the, the last, mod. like, proper original... No, um, last... Uh, Left no, no, Dead no, 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 Left 4 Dead, no, Dead, no, Dead was uh, Turtle Rock. Yeah. 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 yeah, so, I mean, if you think about it, they haven't made a game since Episode 2. <laughs> yeah, like... Oh, that fucking cliffhanger. <laughs> well, Portal Two was internal, but they bought the concept. So yeah. Yeah, but I mean, that's what I'm thinking. Well, I'm no, thinking... Portal Two even they fucking 
bought another game to just, like throw. Yeah, it was like the. Oh yeah, they bought like the gel or the gel game. Yeah. 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 And they stuck so together I, with their portal game. They might still keep buying you know, games and, and, you know, helping them get out the door with whatever support they did, because that's kind of what they've been doing. But I mean, I, I just I, like, let's just let the dream die of so many of these uh, IPs and, and get them back into the hands of people who want to do stuff with them. Cause you know I what? Mean, like Gabe and should just say, fuck it. Half-Life 3 is canceled. Yeah. Just say it. Yeah. I, I, Stop fucking I, I do like, us around. I do like the memes though that have caused <laughs> from Half-Life 3. I know, like, there's a really there's a really cool Easter egg in the uh, the PC version of SteamWorld Dig, where if if you dig down deep enough, you can dig down like the ancient remains of a game store as people are waiting outside for Half Life Three. <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's a cute Easter egg, and that's a great I game to get with. I don't know if Half Life Three ever came out. The, there would be remember when fucking uh, Duke Nukem Forever came out, and that dude had the pre order. Yeah, yeah, for like thirty nine ninety nine from like nineteen eighty or whatever, nineteen ninety six or something. Like, yeah. yeah, fucking Half Life Three comes out in like twenty twenty six. It's gonna be like, dude, I fucking paid for this in like nineteen ninety seven, <laughs> like before the first Half Life came out. I don't fucking remember Half Life. <laughs> I hate those games. It's it's just been it's just been painful to watch Valve become like the company that kind of fucks around with Oculus or the company that you know. You mean Vive? Yeah, Vive. Sorry, yeah. I you know, like another thing based on Steam predictions. I reckon we're gonna start seeing a lot of people get away from Steam because I know there are no indie developers that are happy with Steam at the moment. They fucking yeah. Hate Steam. So it, I reckon that's that's, what, that's itchy partially why is. indies have like flocked to. The Switch and other platforms like itch, itch.io it, is more it, for smaller. Itch.io, yeah, itch.io. Because yeah. there's itch.io, there's GOG, which a lot of people are going with now. Um, most major AAA games are fucking on like the EA store or the Ubisoft store or um, fucking Activision are now doing everything through Battle.net, aren't they? Yeah. Um, well, Destiny too, yeah. Like, I reckon like st- we're going to start seeing like the decline of Steam, if not like to death, but like start seeing like the downward trend of like people just like fuck Steam. Fix that yeah. goddamn interface. <laughs> There's so I mean we man, how many podcasts you think we talk shit about? Steam we just talk, okay guys, do you want to talk shit about Sonic now? <laughs> yeah. Talk shit about Sonic. Let's randomly talk about how Arkham Knight sucks. Uh, like like yeah. every sort of cliche there. No, but I mean I we, how do you guys feel about Randy Pitchford? Um yeah. oh. <laughs> If I didn't care about Valve stuff, I wouldn't complain about it. But I mean, it's it just it, it's painful to like, you know, it's like the, like the best friend who's kind of like ruining his life, you know, with like the best friend who's just like man. shooting up heroin. Yeah, <laughs> but he's making a lot of money for some reason for shooting up heroin. Yeah, he's he's buying <laughs> buying more and more knives for his collection. Yeah. <laughs> just to like do more heroin in front of his uh, eyes. Yeah. yeah, and then, then he just like calls you up one day. He's like, dude. Can you help me hide a body? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that, yeah. that went a little off track. Um, so, PT, did you have any predictions for 2018? Uh, not real. Okay, this, this is kind of a joke one because I find the whole situation just hilarious. Uh, but I feel uh, in 2018, we will still not see a release for Star Citizen. Mm. Yeah, we're not. <laughs> yeah. That, that thing's not come till 2020. That, that's a train wreck. It's a delightful train wreck. And I think people have finally decided that I think even the true believers, because sometimes I, sometimes you like kind of data dive if you read like something awful forums, they have the star citizen threads or yeah. like, or even Derek smart, a uh, Derek smart of all people, resident game designer, Derek smart, master of games that were totally well put together. Yeah. <laughs> that Pine man, guy. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Battle cruiser 3000 AD, a totally functional game. Uh, but no, it's even he's kind of like just wow, this is a total fraud, and we just constantly go on and on. And you read like daily stuff and read like watch the videos of shit that doesn't look even alpha at this point. And you're like, this game's never coming out, and I laugh and laugh. That's exactly. I mean, the money that they got. There are people out there who spent five, six thousand dollars to play this game, and. The, the, instead of like making the game, they've got like five games going on at once now, like within the game, you know. But they've got like that single player thing with Mark Hamill and all those other people. They've got this weird overworld game. They've got like plans to make it a shooter. Have you read about that? Yeah, Squadron yeah. Forty Two. Yes. Everything about it is just like, man, it it made so much money, and yeah, I I don't think it's ever going to come out. And I 
I, I think everybody who's who's waiting for it or thinks that they're going to have might as well just get comfortable with Eve Online or yeah. uh, Elite Dangerous. Or now something they're, in a loss, they're, they're involved in a lawsuit with, I believe, Crytek. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Over apparently moving from CryEngine to Lumberyard, which is actually based off CryEngine. And yeah, Crytek's not happy about that because they're supposed to help promote CryEngine. And uh, yeah. Crytek is in dire financial straits these days anyway. So it's a whole mess. Maybe well, they'll maybe they'll counter sue like uh, like uh, Silicon Knights into Epic and just get like eat their lunch. <laughs> they get destroyed. <laughs> That's like yeah. my favorite fucking like story in all video game history. It's like we're gonna sue you, and we lost so badly we have to destroy every copy of our game. Yeah, because I mean, I, unless I'm wrong about this, they're still using Crytek in whatever that single player game is, Squadron Forty Two, right? Mm -hmm. I and. I think it might have moved over to, to Lumberyard. Let me check. Uh, not scored. I, I mean, if, if they did, then that game was even further from ever coming out because you don't usually switch engine engines midstream when you've already announced, you know, like... Yeah, I think yeah. it's actually all being built on Lumberyard now, but Lumberyard is based off CryEngine, so it probably wasn't a huge switch. No, oh, okay. Yeah, it's it, it, yeah. I, that's a really good one, uh, PT. Because there's no way that game's ever going to come out. It, 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 it just, I find it hilarious. I just, uh, I just, come on, guys, just, just stop. Uh, originally <laughs> planned for a 2014 release. <laughs> oh bullshit! <laughs> yeah. That, oh my god. I guess I think we'll see some form of it someday. Like some part of it will come out in like 2020. People are going to be super disappointed of it, and not everything they have planned is ever going to come out. I think I think the Final Fantasy VII remake, which is obviously not coming in 2018, by the way, has a far better chance of coming out than Star Citizen ever does. I reckon fucking Half Life Three has a better chance of coming out next year than Star Citizen. Yes, <laughs> oh, I agree. Well, am I wrong? But Chris Roberts was never really like flaky, right? He was like usually a guy who would deliver. Like I'm, I'm thinking about most of the stuff he's done. I mean, Mostly Wing Commander. Games. Freelancer kind of came out, right? Mm. Yeah. I mean. I mean Maybe well, did free... Wing Commander. That's all really he did. Yeah, but he did Wing Commander, then Star Lancer, and then I, I don't think Freelancer... Well, Freelancer, did it ever come out? It did. I uh, thought it did, yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I don't remember if it was, like, how, what ended up there. But, I mean, he's he's done some work out there. I just think that, you know, he's kind of now got that weird thing where the guy, the it's creative mind now. behind Wing Commander... A million. There was a lot, dude. I, he worked I, on Wing Commander, Wing Commander the Secret Missions, Wing Commander the Secret Missions 2, Wing Commander 2, Vengeance of Kirillath, Wing Commander 2, the Vengeance of Kirillath Special Operations 1, Wing Commander 2, Vengeance of Kirillath Special Operations 2. Just like reading 2. off the Wikipedia table. <laughs> Wing Commander Privateer, Armada 3, 4, The Price of Freedom, and then is Strike Commander part of the Wing Commander as well? Because he did two yeah. of them as well. Yeah, he's so... Man, I don't know. He, dude. Has, a, he has a niche. Let's give him that. Yeah, but... Man... Okay, Ugh. so moving on to things instead of the you know taking our crystal balls, let's look at things that are actually confirmed to be coming out this year. Um, what games are you guys looking forward to coming out in 2018? We'll try to get through this oh. quick, relatively quickly. Red Dead, Red Dead, my yeah. friends. Red Dead Two. Oh yeah, Dead. that's coming. It's a prequel. Red Dead Two. I Even didn't. The... I I never thought that there would be a sequel to that game, but man, I cannot. I cannot wait. The only thing I don't want to see is Red Dead 2 online. That's <laughs> once I see that online ever. Oh jeez. Oh, no. GTA 5 to avoid like producing single player DLC. It's absolutely not happen. I'm sorry. It it's going online because God, Rockstar just makes the stupidest amount of bank on those stupid shark cards yeah. for GTA 5. Yeah. Was fucking Red Dead online in the first one, wasn't there? No, no, but I mean like Aussies. like GTA is its own own little Online yeah, I know, world. but I mean, like, they did kind of, like, start trying to do that with Red Dead, didn't they? Yeah, but, I, man, I'm not going to pay $500 for a, a cowboy wearing hipster shorts or whatever. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I, spent, shorts. PlayStation I spent $80. I spent $80 on Shot Cuds once. And, <laughs> I mean, what a fucking idiot does that. Okay, that, <laughs> makes, me, that makes me ask, Kappa. Uh, that makes me ask. Um, you're, you have not bought any silver in Destiny 2, have you? I did. You did. I, I, yeah, yeah, I did. Oh, yeah, okay. It, it, I, I, the only reason y'all criticized me for for wasting money on anime waifus. Yeah, no, no. I bought. I spent ten dollars. Oh, I'm still I don't, gonna criticize you. I don't that. think ten dollars is that bad. 
but right. uh, the reason was was I bought it for my kid. He he did really good at school. He was the student of the month for October, and I asked him what he wanted, and he wanted some uh, shaders and stuff like that in Destiny. So I got a <laughs> okay. So now I sound like a dick for making fun of you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, kind of yet. Kind of yes. I bought thirty bucks of Helix credits in Assassin's Creed Origin the other night. Yeah, which yes. kid were you giving a prize to, Ben? <laughs> Why? I don't have a. Pro- I've I've never had a problem with microtransactions. I've always been all for. I bought a man. You want to talk about buying shit? I bought so many skins in Overwatch. You man, I bought a lot of those. I've bought man. What else did I spend a ton? I bought I bought Marvel uh, Heroes. For two hundred bucks, when they had that uh, deal that came out, Fuck. wait, two hundred um, bucks, fucking American, Jesus. Well, no, so it was like it's a like founder edition where you would get every character that basically ever came out. Uh, so that seemed like a good deal at the time. Um, yeah, I spent a. I, I don't have problems with microtransactions as long as, for me, what I what I don't like is when you're buying something that that fundamentally changes the game. I mean, yeah, the, but I don't have a problem with skins, skins or, or whatever. Stuff. Yeah. I can buy all the cosmetic DLC you want. Oh, man, I've, like, I've bought all, like, in StarCraft 2, I've bought all the little uh, announcers. Like, they have, like, so, like, D.Va can be your StarCraft announcer. I've bought those. They're, I think they're funny, but... Does she, make, yeah. does she, like, talk about how the other team's, like, getting wrecked and shit? Yeah, it's exactly... Like, she talks, like... I think somebody was talking about earlier about, like, a shoutcaster. Like, she talks like like a Korean StarCraft or shoutcaster. <laughs> like, if you try to, like, build a pylon, she's like, you're not even pop-capped yet, you know, or, like, population-capped yet. What a noob! And, like, she laughs at you. I'm like, oh, my God, this is so funny. So, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty good. But, yeah, no, I, I, I've spent tons on microtransactions. You're, you're looking at the that. wrong one for it. <laughs> I'm down with that. There, there. Um, anything else you're looking forward to, Guire? Uh, Yeah, also, um, Last of Us. Oh, yeah, Last of Us 2 is coming out. Yeah. 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 I'm... I'm not. I'm. I'm so out of the world of like indie games and little games and stuff. So I'm. I'm always completely ignorant of of those things until somebody tells me I should check something out. But I. Um, yeah. So I always. I always have the obvious triple A A stuff. But The Last of Us too. Same. Same deal. Like I never would have expected or needed a sequel. But knowing that a sequel is coming is like the most exciting thing in the world for me. Yeah. It's. It's. It's got to tread some. Some very. Di- you know good water because if if that game is not as good as the first one i think a lot of people are really upset because like you're yeah. saying i don't think it needed a sequel so if you're going to give me no, a sequel, you was... better make sure you've got you know something some heat behind it it's one of the best stories in games ever ever written and one of the best endings yeah exactly in, in anything ever no, written. I, was still, I, I was gonna say like I was gonna say, like, how do you how do you continue from that ending? But, I don't know. <laughs> well, we'll, 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 find out. Play it. well, we're not gonna we're not gonna we're not gonna say it, but still, there's yeah, a, a I, pretty conclusive I, ending. <laughs> yeah, and, and and that's why I like I'm with you. I, I think it, I'm excited for it because I really love the first one. But man, it, it's it's you're walking through a minefield of that. that. For me, the, like the last time we had something like that, it kind of backfired. Like Wolfenstein, the new or uh, the new order yeah. has a really conclusive ending. Then okay, so they come up with a sequel. And you figure, well, the first one ended ended very conclusively, but they could do something with the second, and the second did not really sit well with me for a lot of reasons. See, but yeah, I, I just finished. I just like yesterday. I just finished the first one. Oh okay. you're, you're, yeah, but you're talking about a series of Wolfenstein's versus, I mean, Last of Us Two is like Schindler's List Two. Yeah. <laughs> 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 if you really want to see a game that didn't deserve, like, didn't need a sequel and got one, and you guys all apparently love. Fucking the ending of Nier is the most conclusive ending of any game I've ever played. Uh, yeah. The one with the, the book? Like, yeah, no, the, the ending North of that book. game is... Do you want me to spoil the ending of like a fucking 10-year-old game? Yeah, go ahead. We spoil it on the Nier cast. Um, yeah, you make a decision where the main character and everything you ever do gets wiped from existence, and <laughs> every single character basically has a couple of years to live. And that's the end of that game. And they made it's a pretty fucking dark sequel. series. Oh yeah. my god, that's not even the darkest one. Because have you played the Draken God games? Oh yeah, the yeah. babies from the sky one. Yeah, the, the... fucking <laughs> your party members are like pedophiles and cannibals, and there's a lot oh, of sexual wow. assault to that series. <laughs> yeah. Um, so as for um, like Guire was talking about big games that he's looking forward to, I'm mainly looking forward to smaller games. So season two of The Wolf Among Us is coming this year. So I'm pumped for that. Oh yeah, that yes. It's, I think you know a new how engine. Doing that? 
because is it like getting into the like timeline of the comics or are they going to be another prequel again or is it just going to do like Walking Dead and just do its completely own thing? I don't, they haven't dropped any hints whatsoever about what the storyline is, but I think at some point they're going to have to resolve kind of the cliffhanger from the end of the first one, which we're not going to spoil here, partially because I don't exactly remember it, <laughs> um, but also because I just, uh, I just hope Telltale gets a little bit of a shakeup, honestly. Like, I, 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 I like Telltale games, but I just feel like, I don't know, something about when I loaded up They're the... They're very much the, a formula. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I want... I do wonder if that, um, the fact they basically cut half their staff, like, a couple months ago, is really going to change something. Because it sounded like, yeah, we're just cutting the fat there. We're going to move on to something, you know, development a different way, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I mean, doesn't it feel sometimes like they're trying to do more of, like, a visual novel and less of, like, a game sometimes, you know? And then oh, yeah. I, I well, want the... I, I wish they would air they would they would kind of shift it a little bit more towards like old school maybe not you know like hunt hunt pixel type adventure games but really get more into that little adventure game space that yeah. did you ever is... play um the new King's Quest yeah yeah like more like that that oh, was well, fucking yeah. incredible not like, like that at okay. all even <laughs> even like the first season of The Walking Dead had puzzles in it yes which yes forget. yeah. It but also then, had some really not great gameplay sequences. Oh yeah, like, but, at least, but then if you play like the Game of Thrones one, it's literally just like A, B, or C. You know, like pick a yeah. pick a response, and the game just I, I can't remember doing stuff in that game besides picking there, dialogue there choices. Were few, there were a few quick time events. Um, nothing, nothing particularly interesting. It was just like run in this direction and press X when a sword comes at your head. That was the most gameplay e it got. They yeah. learned. They learned a lesson from the Jurassic Park game. <laughs> yeah, I heard Let that. the kids was get not... eaten by the dinosaur. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So in terms of other games, looking forward to um, Act Five of Kentucky uh, Route Zero is coming out. Yeah. So the other thing I'm looking forward to is Act Five of Kentucky Route Zero. They're finally going to conclude that. So um, I'm excited for that. How long are each of those? Because I never for sure. I never got started with the first one, like and two-ish hours. Okay, sure. I should just, I should just sit down and play those as kind of a a palate cleanser one day. I, at this point, I'd say just wait till it's finished. I mean, it's how, how do you describe it? Like it's kind of like a, it's very artsy. Like right, you you can just play it and just enjoy it. But I would I would say at some point you're probably going to want to finish the story. Um, sure. You know, all at once because we've been waiting a long time between four and five. Yeah. Um, but I, I think you'll probably get there um, really s- shortly. So I, I would I, I wouldn't say you've got to play it right now, but uh, it, it's a fun adventure game, man. It, it's it's really cool. Oh yeah, I mean I, I played a little of the first chapter and I I liked like the way it was going. I liked how just the way they were delivering text and you know the the dialogue and the stuff. And I was like, oh, this is kind of clever. And oops, okay, but yeah, uh, yeah, no, but yeah, I that's definitely something to look forward to. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is sort of it is a very unique experience and it is very much its own thing. Uh, but at this point, you can just wait for the fifth actor. It's going to come later this mm-hmm. year. And finally, the last game I'm looking forward to is Consortium: The Tower, which is a sequel to Consortium. Uh, do you guys do you guys know what Consortium is about? Or what never heard of it. Okay, so imagine if Mass Effect and the Stanley Parable had a baby, but it was set entirely aboard the Normandy. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, do you oh, get to this? Get... Ah, this game. Yeah. Uh, I remember, this game came out a long time ago, man. Yeah. So the the sequel's finally coming out this year. It's in early access right now. And uh, the, oh gonna... shit! No, I have seen this game. Yeah. Yeah. It's it looks kind of janky and it is kind of janky, but it's a really nifty kind of game. Um, it, it's one of the few games where. Like, it genuinely responds... Like, the game genuinely responds to all the weird shit that you can do. And it's very reactive. So, I'm I'm excited to play, you know, the next chapter of this, where you're, like, finally let off the ship and you can do your own thing. That's cool, man. Yeah. I'm, Let's see where that goes. Um, so, Kappa, what are you looking forward to? Uh, a couple of mine have already been named. Um, so, I'm just going to give you kind of, like, my top three. 
Uh, number one, Anthem. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you can't tell. I mean, come on. It, it's a, a blend of Mass Effect and Destiny. I'm, I'm, I'm in already. I will buy whatever I have to buy to play Anthem. Um, I, I do want to see some more. The, the gunplay that they showed in that E3 looks a little bit wonky to me. There was something that really wasn't sitting well with that third person kind of just spraying style. It looked a little Gears of Warish, you know. So I'm hoping that. You know, Mass I'm really Effect... curious to see what that game is when you're not shooting people. Yeah, That's me too. My main question. Me too. Uh, and I, I, I hate the idea that you know EA kind of develops their games in a bubble because I really would like the Bioware guys to be able to go next door to like the Dice guys and be like, "Look, help us sort out the shooting shit." You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you would like to think that that happens in these like mega studios. I don't know if it does or not, but like, it apparently, and... does not because. Uh, Dice are in fucking like Sweden or something. Aren't yeah, they? well, the other, really next door. the other thing is that there's yeah, no theoretically there's like no communication even within Bioware. Like, yeah, Dragon Age Inquisition sorted out a whole bunch of RPG stuff to edit into Frostbite that just did not make its way into Mass Effect Andromeda. Right. So <laughs> I mean, uh, from what I've seen, the E3 stuff looked cool, but they did that whole thing where they're basically showing you a, a, a video and having people talk over it. That might be a game. Because what it's probably supposed to hit what fall this year? Yeah, probably. And and they haven't even talked about like a beta. I, 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 uh, for you guys is that like September October? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. spring for you okay, guys. Cool. Sorry. Q Q three is what I would. That's usually like the our big our big blockbuster game window, right? Q three Q four. Uh, the you know holiday time for us. Um, so I'd imagine they'd be pushing for that, but I mean, having not having seen much about it since the E3 is really not a good sign to me. And what I saw there was like the 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 talking part looked cool, but then the combat was kind of like iffy. But yeah, I want to see more. But I, I mean, the potential is definitely there for me. Yeah, um, we'll see what they. My second. Yeah, go ahead. My second one is Jurassic World Evolution. You guys remember how much I love Planet Coaster? You put dinosaurs in Planet Coaster, and I'm 100 percent in. Um, I, I've, I know everybody's got their dream of what they want a Jurassic Park game to be, but for me, it's always been uh, a sim theme park builder type game uh, for Jurassic yeah, like World. Yeah, literally make your own Jurassic Park. Yeah, yeah, and then you know which dinosaurs go where, where do you charge, what you know that that's what I've always wanted. Are you gonna make an Indominus Rex? You know, I <laughs> like that kind of stuff. Um, I'm really interested in that. And, and then like, my last, are, one. it's like the equivalent of a natural disaster in the game, like the dinosaur escaping its enclosure. Oh, like, hundred percent. Fucking hope so. Yeah, I, I think like <laughs> even like in the little trailer they released. I mean, it looks good graphics wise. Um, and I think what they showed in the trailer was like basically a dinosaur escaping and you like frantically building like, I mean, what do they call the 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 de- the Robert Muldoon guys in Jurassic Park. I mean, they have like a little cool name, you know. But you're you're building those guys to go out there and, and hunt yeah. the dinosaurs, and uh, I thought that would be pretty neat. But uh, Planet Coaster combined with Jurassic Park, I think is is, yeah. is a win for everybody. And what, um, what's the other game you're looking forward to? Uh, Skull and Bones. Um, I've wanted a pirate game <laughs> for so long, um, and it's not going to be Sea of Thieves. So <laughs> I, I'm excited for Skull and Bones. Um, it I looks think looks like Ask Creed Four without the ass part. Yeah, and I, I, I t- it kind of has a little bit of like a MOBA flair to it, um, which I'm interested One thing in. You know, I'm really, really curious about that fucking Skull and Bones is there is a really quick that you see at the end of the title that hints that there's fucking monsters in that Yeah, game. like Krakens. Yeah, like the, the Kraken kind of pops up at the end, like right? Just the normal, fu- well, you just see like the squid like swimming underneath the water or something, but like just the normal fucking like pirate stuff. I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure I've had my fill with Rogue and AC4. But yeah. if you add like fucking giant monsters into that shit, I'm all on board for yeah, that. Yeah, it, it looks like that, like there's like a solo play game that that's like that. That's like, you know, being a being in uh, Black Flag, but it looks like there's kind of like this multiplayer game where it's like, you know, you might have a, a man of war, but I've got a, a galleon and, you know, my friend's got a, you know, like a sloop that's fast and maneuverable. I, I think that could be some really cool multiplayer, um, you know, components to it. And if they if they really kind of, you know, ramp up the, the customization to your ships, man, oh, having a pirate ship in a video game just seems like such a cool thing to have. You know, <laughs> so. This is why I wanted, like, I wanted Bioware to do Assassin's Creed 4, not Destiny. Yeah. Like, that yeah. would be my ideal game. Bioware does pirates. Yeah. But, yeah, I'll sell for Skull and Bones if it's fun. We'll see. <laughs> um, ben, what are you looking forward to? I've got a shitload on my list, so I'm going to run through them pretty quickly. Like, yeah. especially ones that everyone knows about. 
Um, well, A, I am a fucking huge Mega Man fanboy, so I am so excited for Mega Man 11. Oh, absolutely. So absolutely. Goddamn, Lily. Doing the fucking sprites from Mega Man 1 again. Like, it was fun for Mega Man 9, like, kind of a retro thing. Mega Man 10 kind of got to the point of, like, seriously, guys, really? But, like, Mega Man 11, and, like, he actually changes his form with his new powers and gets, like, different... I'm so excited for that game. Um, Looks better than my number 9. Give it that. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, second one, I'm not actually sure if they've confirmed a release date, but Bayonetta 3 for the Switch. Yeah. Like I said before, the day that comes out, I'm buying a Switch. Just no fucking talking about it. Um... Fuck you, Kappa. Sea of Thieves looks amazing. <laughs> okay, good luck with that. <laughs> I'm really excited for that game, yeah. uh, especially the co-op elements. I'm just like, gonna watch Jacksepticeye yell about it on YouTube. You know, it, <laughs> me and my look, wife have already planned to like have a little ship together, and that's gonna be fun. That's um, the thing, though, because I mean, it's you and your wife, but then who are the other two people? You know, who's the guy they, that you find on have, Xbox um, Live that's gonna they, steer your ship no, while you said, and your? Uh, you can have like they have the smaller ships for just two people and everything. Okay, well, you, your um, wife can, can enjoy that then. Some of the smaller games I'm really excited for, though, Ashen was a game they showed at E3 at the Xbox demo a while ago, and they're not really saying much about, but is apparently coming out this year and looks fucking amazing. Is that it's like, like a, um, a brawler, or is it? Uh, no, it was the one that was like Dark Souls, but no one had any faces and was a really simple art style. Okay, yeah, yeah, I think I remember that. Yeah. And that's supposed to be like, it's like, online and people you meet online can come back to your town and then they join you it's it's there's a lot going on in that game i'm pretty sure i've talked about it here before so i won't go into it too much um indivisible the new game by the guys mm -hmm. Skull Girls. Yes. um i put like 500 dollars into the indiegogo campaign for that it's really? like valkyria it's like valkyria profile with that animation, animation right yeah yeah with like yeah and like they put out the beta the backer demo or whatever and like just the amount of like stuff in those backer demos is insane. Like I have only got like ninety five percent completion on it because there's so much hidden extra stuff in it. Like if when you beat the final boss in the backer demo, you just like run right and go to the end of it, or you run left and you have new moves, and then you can like find more stuff in the area they gave you. So what else is um, on your list? There's Iconoclast, which actually comes out next week, I think. Is okay. um a pixel art like platformer game for. Vita PS4 by Kojak, a guy that did um, Noi to Love, I think it's called. Yeah. Or no I to... Yeah, it looks really, really cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, has anyone seen the new One Piece game they've shown? Yeah, One it's Piece, um, World Seeker. Yeah, that that looks surprisingly good. I don't like, even a like One Piece. Open world like action game where you like you're using your stretchy powers to like grapple around the world and all that kind of stuff. That looks amazing. Yeah. Um, speaking of of open of like of um, RPGs based on like anime properties the the new Sword Art Online game fuck me it actually looks good how's that possible like Fail a Bullet like it's a third person shooter slash RPG what's that called because if I just call Google Sword Art Online game, I'm gonna yeah, get a Sword Art, Sword, Art, Sword Art Online colon Fatal Bullet Fatal Bullet because there's also um, yeah. oh that is it Grand Blue Fantasy or something is getting a game that looks really good yeah um, well, anyway, oh shit, sorry, playing stuff. Um, quickly running through the other stuff. Uh, Little Devil Inside, if you've never heard of that game, look up a trailer for it. It's like this weird survival, I don't even know what fucking kind of game it is. The bits they've shown in different trailers are like surviving in a desert and then like, like looting bottom of the sea and like these little trawler things and like fighting giant monsters. In I don't even know what kind of game it is, but it looks amazing. Um, Pray for the Gods, does anyone remember that one? I've heard of it, but I don't remember what it's about. It's like a spiritual successor for Shadow of the Colossus that actually has more stuff to do in the world other than just the Colossus. Yeah. Um, and Greedfall is the new game by fucking Spiders, who are the guys that made, like, Mars Warlogs. And Mars... They make, like, this level of, like, charming Eastern European jank as fuck games that I love. And... But they also the people like, no Piranha Bytes did Elex. I was gonna say, Piranha yeah, Bytes is the same um, kind of developer. Yeah, uh, Spiders was they did um of Orcs and Men, which is one of my favorite games. Um, this is like this like colonial 17th century setting fantasy RPG. It looks like if you go look up a trailer for it, it looks like unlike anything else that exists. Like 
it looks really, really cool. Um, Owlboy is finally coming to console, so excited for that. And I'm probably going to buy Assassin's Creed Rogue again because they're doing the Xbox One release. Nice. And PT, what are you looking forward to? Uh, he's uh, Ben named a couple there, but I just want to say this here. Uh, I'm coming from someone who didn't like the second game at all, but I'm just curious about the third Darksiders game because I, I like those games. Uh, I mentioned Kingdom Hearts earlier there. I don't know if Psychonauts 2 is coming out this year. No, it's delayed to but... 2019. Yeah. To, okay. Okay, that's what I thought there. Okay, uh, let's see, uh, because he mentioned quite a few things there. I'm still interested to see if that uh, not-at-all Castlevania game, that Bloodstained, is going to come out this year. Ritual of the Night? That, yeah, I believe it's yep. set for this year. Okay, yep, because like I, I'm a 2D, I'm kind of a sucker for 2D platforming in general. Uh, which then this brings up probably one of your bugaboos. Uh, they're, the, I think the Guacamelee sequel is this year as well. And I know I you don't like that. Sequel? Yeah, fuck Guacamole. That game's awful. <laughs> what the fuck? How did I not know there was a Guacamole sequel? Yeah, it's on the way. Uh, yeah, you're wrong. well, you're wrong, Merv. As much as you're wrong about Ori the Blind Forest, too. But I like Ori the Blind Forest. Am I not I thought you didn't to? like. I, I thought you didn't like that game. No, I love that game. Well, okay, good. Okay, you're the one who sold me on it. Okay, yeah. good. Okay, that's good. Um, let's see here. Um, there are other things like boy, like that Secret of Mana reboot looks could be nasty bad and that could be fascinatingly bad <laughs> the uh, you know that one um and also i was kind of looking through like the list of games throughout there and i noticed that there was a game called for pc it's called a way out which is by the creators of brothers tale of two sons yeah oh that it, looks really yeah, good joseph the, the guy the game where joseph Fares went on a huge rant about at uh at the game awards do you mean gaming what Tommy did you say like out? fuck konami and <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Uh, yeah fuck the oscars fuck for like the an oscars. hour <laughs> oh yeah that's right fuck the oscars but yeah it's uh, but yeah it's, that, those creators that i read about it, it's like okay so it's basically that those creators doing a prison break game oh that's fascinating and they're oh that's Although, cool apparently the prison break thing is only like the first quarter of the game or something and then it's like them on the lamb or something like that i heard yeah which sounds pretty cool but yeah, beyond that though, yeah. Uh, again, Ben kind of ran through like the Mega Man Eleven. Like I'm again, that sounds great, and and I did also have uh, Indivisible on my list as well. So yeah, yeah, stuff like that. A lot of games I did actually just forget one though that I really did want to mention because I haven't heard any many people talk about it. Has anyone seen Griftlands? Uh, is that the Devolver Digital one? Uh, probably. They publish a lot of shit. It's um Clay, the people that do like Don't Starve and um. That oh, okay. yeah, yeah, I've heard, yeah. Of, I've heard of the game. It's like a weird fucking like JRPG fucking like trash punk. It looks aesthetic. like um, it looks like a uh, what's that old seventies movie with lots of uh. That doesn't narrow it down very much. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it, heavy metal. It looks like heavy metal. Yeah. Style art. Yeah, I'm really excited for that. That looks awesome. Yeah, and just writing down a few more games that that I am looking forward to now. I'm looking at my list. Um. Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth, which just came in the mail for me today. So, uh, sorry, Hacker's Memory, which is the sequel to Cyber Sleuth, just came in the mail for me today. So, excited for that. Um, Manifold Garden, which looks like Antichamber, but not terrible. Oh, shit. I forgot that came out this year. Yeah, Manif- yeah so that's coming. I don't think a release date has been announced yet, but it's supposed to come out this year. Uh, Necrobarista, which is like a. <laughs> like a. What? Sorry? Necro Barista? Is that like <laughs> undead coffee making? I I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's like a like a cross between like a visual novel and and kind of like an adventure game. I don't know exactly what it's gonna be like. Sounds like it's oh fucking Guar left too easy. It's set in a coffee shop in Melbourne. Oh great! Yeah. Sounds like an over sounds like an overcooked spinoff. Yeah, so we'll see how <laughs> that sounds goes. like it's right up Merv's alley. I'll tell you that. <laughs> like. Australian anime? Are you kidding me? I am so yeah. there. Um, <laughs> then, whatever this No More Heroes spinoff turns out to be, uh, that looks like it'll be good. Valkyria Chronicles 4 looks nice. Uh, Vampire, the new game from Don't Nod, people who made Life is Strange and Remember Me. Uh, Don't Nod always has a little bit of jank in their games, but I'm always intrigued by what they put out, so I'm excited. Uh, Yakuza 6 is concluding the Yakuza series, so that looks like it's going to be a good time. Uh, Y2K, a postmodern RPG, is coming out finally after years of delays. So that's like a uh, hipster JRPG, if you will. We'll see how that goes. And yeah, finally, the postmodern RPG. 
Yeah, exactly. Hopefully the writing is better than some of those parody RPGs that came out. Like these, uh, boy, like, there's like there's like a person that uh, like Cthulhu saves the world and um, Breath of Death Seven or whatever. We're just like, oh, we're just gonna do like eight bit RPGs and be so clever and the writing's so garbage. And then they later that same person later did the third and fourth Penny Arcade games. Yeah, um, yeah, and those weren't very good. Uh, it just they were just very like bland. I just. I had them all in a bundle, and I actually liked the first two Penny Arcade games, and the third and fourth one were just, it, it, you're right, it was it was more trying to, like, be like an homage, but not really an homage, just more like, yeah, I remember this. It's like, yeah, the, it's like the Family Player Guy one. equivalent of, yeah, exactly. Like, the first two games were not perfect, but they were interesting, and yeah. I was wanting to play another one in that vein, so... They were kind of like an action adventure game. It was really weird. It was a, it was a weird style of game, and like the time hit battle system, and yeah, just yeah. great. Yeah, and um, just to conclude, the last game I'm looking forward to this year, the Yoshi game looks cool. I like the idea of being able to flip the game world around to solve puzzles, and I like the sort of found object aesthetic they've got going. So we'll see how that turns out. I got really, really bored of the last Yoshi game. The yeah, they're a little too one. easy, probably. Yeah, Yoshi's Woolly World. Like, yeah, like I, I just I, I remember like it was all like fun and charm. It's just like by the, I think I got to like a second world of it, and I'm just like I don't really give a shit anymore. Yeah, sometimes yeah, it's really too easy. Turned me off with the cardboard one. Yeah, I, I think that you know how like everybody else is dying for a mascot uh, platformer, and I think Nintendo might have too many right now. I mean, you guys excited for the new Kirby game? <laughs> like, I, I, oh, I put it on the list. Because like, <laughs> Kirby won like a fighting game or something. Uh, like, isn't it fucking Smash Bros? No, that's that's like the 3DS spinoff of like a like a mini game that was already in like Triple Deluxe. Yeah, I, I don't think like the new Kirby game looks amazing or anything, but like it'll be you'll have your you know your standard Nintendo polish. It'll be all right. Right. Like I like I, I thought... played the last two Kirby's on the DS though. No. I, I... I played Triple Deluxe on 3DS. I like it. Kind of rad. It was fine. Yeah, Triple Deluxe was fine. So yeah, we'll see how this turns out. It'll probably get decent reviews, as most Nintendo game first party titles do. Yeah. Who knows? Um, anything else you guys are looking forward to? You want to mention? Uh, no. I'm no, we're, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we we talked for way too long. Um, so on that note. Thank you guys for, for being on the podcast with me, and thank you all for listening. If you'd like to keep up to date with the podcast, we have a website, avocadogamescast.wordpress.com. We post each episode. We also post a link dump so you can fact check what we say and compare it to reality. Sometimes we're pretty divorced from reality, and we apologize for that. Um, you can also subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play Music. I think we got picked up by a bunch of other podcast aggregators, so... Look on your favorite podcast aggregator. We might be there. Just search for Avocado Gamescast. And um, we talk a lot about the avocado. And in case you're wondering what that is, it's a pop culture forum that's community-driven and community-run. And you can find it at the-avocado.org. Don't actually type out the word hyphen. We will laugh at you if you do. All right. Where are, those Aust- where are the Austin freaks? <laughs> we are the Austin freaks, despite the fact that none I of us still don't understand what Austin. that means. Um, uh, so you can look it up on the website, but it involves somebody being very, very horny. <laughs> and that note, let's call this podcast to a close. Um, good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.